Hey everyone, and welcome to Mythotopia, the two to four player area control game. Absolutely fantastic. We have a three player setup here. Yeah, I'm going to be running through all three players solo, so we'll see how this goes. Max hand limit of five cards. Obviously, when you play with other actual living human beings, you're not going to display your hand out in public like this. Uh, but just for the sake of the camera, this is what we'll do. To get the whole table in, it is pretty zoomed out, so you probably can't read anything, but I'll explain anything as it comes up. I'm not going to go over the rules. That would take three hours, as is playing three players like this. It's probably going to take two hours just to get through this game anyway. But let's go ahead and get started. First, though, I do want to run through the list of potential actions you can take. None of this is going to mean anything to anybody. But just in case you're curious, we have the ability to invade a province, place armies, remove armies, place ships, remove ships, end a war, buy armies and ships, draft an improvement card, place cards into our reserve, Discard cards, remove one or two cards from the deck completely, perform the action on a card, patronage, which in this game we will not be doing any patronizing, pass, and end the game. So yes, in fact, in order to win the game, you have to, at the beginning of your turn as your first action, declare an end the game action. That just means you're going to have to be in the lead on the scoring track. All wars that are going on on the board will be resolved immediately, and you can only take a in the game action if you've calculated that you will be the winner still when all wars are simultaneously ended. But that is that. Let's go ahead and get right into it. How does the game end? You'll see there are seven cards over here. Each of them have those little tokens on them. The number on the token is how many victory points it's worth. I don't know if you can even see that, but there's two tokens here worth two points apiece, three tokens here, two points apiece, six tokens there, one point apiece, one token there, three points, seven tokens at two points apiece, seven tokens at two points apiece, seven tokens at one point apiece. Anytime one of these seven things is done, the player who did it will take a token off the card. The game can end when four or more of these cards have been emptied of their tokens. Only when that has happened can a player then take and end the game action at the beginning of their turn. Three players set up here, red, yellow, blue. We're just going to go in that order. Red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. Starting with red, so let's go ahead and see what we got here. As you can see on the board, the board is seeded with towns. Each player has eight provinces that they currently control, seven of which have towns in them, one of which is going to have a citadel, which is a special victory point card. If a player captures another player's citadel, the first player to do that is going to get three points out of the deal. These top four victory point cards are randomized at the beginning of the game, so every game is going to be different there. These three are fixed. The different victory point possibilities are, besides Citadel, Spoils of War. So every time you take a territory over from an opponent, you'll get a point. And once any token runs out, you can keep doing that action. You just won't get any extra points for it. Here be Dragons is what this one is. So there are five dragons out there. Every time you take over a province with a dragon in it, you will collect one of those. And there are more dragons than there are tokens, of course. Master of the Seas, the first person to have ships in three of the different sea areas will get the first token. Then the, next, then the first player to have a ship in all four. So it could end up being the same player. But there are four sea sections here. One here, there's a dividing line there. This is the second sea area. This little lake is the third. This little lake up there is the fourth. And then points for building castles, building cities, which means upgrading these little monopoly hotel towns into city pieces, which are here on our reserve cards. And finally, roads. Every time you build a road, you will put a road token out there. And I know I said I wasn't going to go over the rules. I'm going to try to refrain from doing that. Okay, one final thing. All these cards up here can be purchased. 
they go into our decks. These, this is also a deck building game. So we have a card representing each province that we own, the deck of, because there's a lot of unclaimed provinces as well. Deck of unclaimed provinces is over here. When you take over an unclaimed province, you get that card, add it to your discard pile. And when your deck runs out, you'll shuffle the discard pile. So then you'll be able to potentially use that card. All the province cards correspond to the provinces out here you'll notice there's icons on them the little brick icon is bricks used for building little green food symbols used for invading other provinces little shields or armies and then gold is gold you use gold to buy these cards you use the stone bricks to build roads castles and upgrade your towns into cities and then we have these tokens here. This is little extra town counters. So if you do take over an unclaimed uh, province, you put one of your town counters there. Now, in order to do that, you have to actually have some of these left. There's a finite amount. Every player starts with eight provinces out on the board. Each province is worth three victory points. So we've all started with 24 victory points, eight times three. So we start the game at eight every time you lose a province you lose three points whoever took it over gets three points so it's a six point swing but actually in this game with that spoils of war token there you take over someone's province you'll have three for the province one for spoils of war and the other person's going to lose three points so that's a seven point swing but imagine this if you take over a province with someone's citadel in it you'll get the three point token the one point token plus three points for taking over the province. The other person's going to lose three points for having lost the province. That's a 10 point swing. But the Citadel provinces have a plus two to their defense, which again, I'm going into rules again. I said I wasn't going to do that. Let's start this game. Bulls are upside down over these because we have a finite amount of armies we can send into battle and ships. You can purchase more but you don't want to dip into that supply until you've actually purchased them, which is why they are under lock and key. Otherwise, it is so easy to accidentally grab army tokens from your reserve supply. All right, so red goes first. What do they got? Well, they have two provinces here with stone on them, two provinces with armies on them, and one army card that can be either used for the two armies or for the gold. So you can do two things on your turn out of that list of actions that we saw earlier. In order to invade a province, you need food. We have no food. In fact, red, out of all their territories, you can see what cards they have in their deck by the symbol on the province. And if you look, red has a military, a gold, one food, military, military, stone, stone, stone. So they only have one food in this entire deck. However, you'll notice we will each also have a market card, which can act as a food, and also a ship card, which can act as a food. So technically, out of all these cards in here, we each start basically with a deck of 12 cards, eight for the provinces we get, and four generic cards, which are the ship, a build, market, and an army card. So there are three food in, our, in Red's deck, which they have drawn none of in their starting hand. In order to use these bricks, in order to build something, you need a build card, much like blue has over here. But we don't know that, being red ourselves. So our actions here are potentially limited. We can't invade anything. We can't build anything. So what can we do? Well, we are going to purchase something because this army card has a gold on it. So we can take this card out of our hands, put it in our discard pile. We're using the gold and we're going to come and go shopping over here. Take one of these cards and add it to our deck. I'm not going to go over what all these cards are, but there are some fantastic cards over here. But red, knowing that red has lots of army cards, they are going to be invading quite a bit. And there's a fantastic card here called cavalry, which allows you to add plus one military strength, when invading, and that is just universally whenever we invade. So we're going to add that to our discard pile. We still have another action that we can take. We don't have anything we can do with ships. No, we can add cards to our reserve. That's what we're going to do. We have the ability to add up to three cards to our reserves. And I think what we're going to do is add 
these two army cards and for this game we're just going to say that our reserve is this space right above the reserve card so that frees up three slots why would you want to do that well because if you're stuck with a crappy hand and we only used one card we would only get one card for the next turn and that's no good that card also could potentially be bad so we have up to three slots in our reserve we just added two of them why did i choose those two because they're army cards we know we're going to be using those so those won't be cluttering up our reserve for very long now we have three slots it's the end of our turn we've done two things we purchased a card and we added cards to our reserve so then we will refill our hand. Now we have a food, which is fantastic. We also have a market, which can be used as food, gold, or stone. And we have a gold. So we're looking pretty good. Next turn is gonna be a fantastic turn for red. Now we move over to yellow. Yellow has several things they can do. They have lots of armies. They have food to feed those armies to invade. And they even have gold, multiple gold. You can only buy one card per turn, however. So what yellow's going to do first is, hey, let's go ahead and buy a card. We'll just make their discard pile up here. In fact, let's make that universal. Each player's discard is going to be above their deck. Okay, so we're spending a gold to purchase a card, which card do we want to buy? Yellow, as you can see, when you look at the initial placement of the board, red really controls the east. Yellow kind of up in the north-ish, but also has some central spots. Blue kind of on the eastern there, and also has island, southwestern, and a little one kind of lonesome guy way up north there. Uh, but anyway, for yellow, yellow has a decent amount of firepower they could potentially be going after an attack strategy as well so it's really what do they want to buy here there's a lot of great cards but a card that could really come in handy is oh boy let's just go with the general the general allows you to substitute a province card which is any of these named province cards when building or invading because whenever you do invade you have to have and we'll show it in just a second a card a province that you're invading from you play that card and if you want to build something you have to play the card corresponding to the province that you want to build in so you can't just build in ictus whenever you want you actually have to have the ictus card in order to build there so this general card can be used as a substitute for a province card when invading or building. So that is what we purchased. And then as our second action, oh yes, folks, we're gonna invade. So what you do is you choose which province you want to invade from. We have three cards here, three province cards where we can launch our invasion from. Custis, we can't use Custis because that's gonna be our food source. You have to have one food when invading if you're going over hills you'll notice there's hills and mountains mountains are the snowy peaks hills are the more rounded peaks i don't know if you can even see that on camera but you need two food if you're going to invade over a hill can't invade over mountains but any of the other provinces just take a food so that's going to be our one food so we can't use custis as the invasion card because we're going to use it as our food card can't use the army card because that doesn't have a province name. So we have two potential provinces we can invade from. Welkin, which is our capital where we placed our citadel earlier. We can invade from there, but actually no we can't because there's mountains over here, mountains over there. The only province that it's connected to is down here. We already have this province, so we can't invade from Welkin, which means Darb is the only province we can invade from. Nice thing about these province cards is they highlight in red where on the map it is. So Darb, Upper Northeast, you can tell there is Darb. So we are going to invade from Darb. So that's how this works. We are invading from Darb with food, and we are going to bring one, two, three armies with us. And here are three army counters. Now, where are we going to invade? You then choose a province 
that you are going to invade adjacent to the card you played from where you're launching the invasion. So Darb, if we had a ship here, we could also go across any of those, of course, not to completely destroy our dragons, but we don't have a ship there, so we can't invade across the sea. What that means is we can either invade Empyrean to the north, northeast Grimp, or southeast Ogdode. So where do we want to invade? Well, let's see. Let's go with, because obviously whichever one we choose is going to have ramifications. If we go down here and attack blue, blue's going to be pissed at us. Red's going to also be pissed at us. Red's also going to be upset because they're capitals over here. So if we start getting yellow up in the northeast, they're going to have the potential to really target us from that point on. Or we could go up north and go after that neutral territory. But the problem with that is whatever numbers in this circle is the number of defense that that territory has. So you would need one more than that number of army counters in order to take it over. But the dragon adds plus four. So that would be four plus three is seven, which means we would need eight army power to go there. This early on, it might not be wise to leave troops tied up there. So what do we do? Well, we see that red, and this would be visible in the actual game, what you put in your reserves. We see red is two up there in their reserves. We don't know what blue has, but looking at blue's armies on the board, we know that they only have two cards that would have army counters on them, plus their army card itself. What are the chances of them having you know, a good portion of those. So let's quit messing around here and we are going to invade Ogdode, which is blue, three armies. So that was from Darb, south, with food and three armies. So that is how an invasion works. And now we've just done our two actions. So we will refill our hand of five cards for next time. So pick a color now, who do you wanna win? All right, so then it's over to blue. You end a battle at the beginning of your turn. So if blue did, if blue did, well, actually wanted to for some reason, they could say, all right, end that war. Yellow would win. Blue, however, does not want to waste, because that would be one of your two actions. Blue doesn't want to waste an action. Blue has no troops here. Blue knows that province is lost at this point. Yep, it's kind of luck of the draw, basically, in the card game. For the most part, at least early on like this, your starting hand has no armies, and how are you going to defend against that? Well, you could launch a ship. You put your ship card out. That means that that allows you to take a ship and put it in any body of water that you have at least a province adjacent to. So, for example, blue has something there, so they could put a ship there. Blue has this by the shore here, so they can put something there. Blue's next to that one, and blue's next to that one. However, blue is not next to that one for much longer. Putting a ship in the water adds plus one to your military value. If blue wanted to go after this Master of the Seas card, they could stick a ship in there right now, because, you know, this is kind of their last chance to do that, but it would be a waste of a ship if they're going to lose that territory. Not saying that they won't actually try to invade some of these other territories, you know, later on. So that is a good question. Does blue want to do that? That would be an action. But they also have a lot of stone here they could build. You know what? As a matter of fact, folks, there is something blue can do. And this could piss off. Yellow. Nope, they can't. What I was thinking was, with this build card, they could build a castle in that province. Castle gives plus two military value. You'll also notice there's two shades on this map, a lighter shade and a darker shade. Darker shade means 
that is plus one military value for being in kind of the highlands. Well, that is a darker shade province. So blue automatically starts out with one military value in that province. If they build a castle there, that's three. So they'd be tied with yellow and be able to save the province. However, you, in order to build, you need that province's card. We do not have Ogdode out here, unfortunately. We could put a ship in that water, plus one for being in the highlands. That province would have a potential to have two military value, but unfortunately with three armies there by yellow, it would still be a lost cause. So that is not going to happen. Instead, let's focus on something else. Oh boy, let's actually go ahead and add our ship, not to that body of water. We, we start out with two ships that we could potentially put somewhere. So we are going to place a ship. We're going to place a ship in this body of water here. Why? Because that'll add plus one military value to our capital province since it does border this sea just barely there. But also we do have a province up here that we want to keep. So that adds plus one military value there. It gets us a ship out. But also we are going to build. And what are we going to build and where? Well, let's see here. We can build in Malboge or we can build in Margent. Margent is down there lower right. Malboge, Malabolge is right here. I like the idea of building something here because... It would, what we would build is either a castle to add defense, which I typically haven't, I, I'm not going to do yet because we don't know where that's going to be necessary really right now out of these two provinces anyway. We could build a road, which means that allows you to substitute one province card for another. So let's say these two provinces right here had a road in between them. And I wanted to invade from this province, but I didn't have that province's card, but I had this province's card. I could play a Malbolge card, and that would, because of the road, allow me to invade from any of those or from where the province where the road connected it. But if you look at these two territories, one here, you have to connect territories you own. There's a mountain there. You can't build over a mountain. We could build across that hill, but that would cost us an extra stone, and it already costs two stone to go over uh, uh, to build a road in the first place. So we would pay. We place this card to build the road from there. Use the build card to build, and we only have two stone left, so we couldn't use a third stone to build over a hill. So we have only one other option. That's to. The third building option is to build a town. One of these, every time you build one of those, it open, it unlocks an extra space in your reserve, can hold more cards there. So, is that what we want to do? Actually, yes it is. And we're going to build it over here because they have a little bit extra defense down there too. So, in Margent, we are building with two stone which is how much a town, a city costs. So we are replacing this town with a city. Boom, that goes back in our supply. That unlocked an extra reserve spot. But more importantly, we built a city. So we claim one of these victory point counters. And that is fantastic. Blue takes the lead. It's real-time scoring, so you always know how many points everyone has. Put those used cards on disco bar. So we did two things. Ship in the water, built a city. All right, time to refill our hand. And then that was basically the first round of the game. Red, yellow, and blue have all taken their first turn. Two actions apiece, which means it's time to come back over to red. You even remember what red was up to that first turn. Well, they purchased something and they reserved some things. Fantastic choice if I do say so myself, to reserve those army cards because that allowed us to get out some food. We have some more gold. What do we want to do here? Well, we know we're going to be invading for sure because we have armies, we have food, we have cards we can attack from. And we have a gold here. 
So unless we wanted to use this province, which could give us a gold to spend, but we could also use that province as where we invade from. Frampold is up there. So if we wanted to invade here or here, we could, um, or we could use the gold. But let's see, where else could we invade from? Eon, which is here. Uh, we would need multiple food and we could go up there because it does take two food instead of one if you're invading over a hill. And there's a hill right here separating our capital. Obviously, it wouldn't be a bad idea to try to take over this territory because they're so close to our capital. Um, and yellow is heavily engaged over there. That's the other thing when you're thinking about where to invade. You obviously can't see everyone's hands. You can see how many army cards each person has. So if we already know that yellow spent three armies there, they what the likelihood of them having a bunch of army cards in their hand to defend themselves next turn is unlikely. So that may not be a bad move. Otherwise, we could go from Grimp, which is up here, um, and our, we could invade that same spot that's already being invaded, but we don't have enough military to make that feasible. We could invade Darb over there, but I say we do this instead. Let's go ahead and spend uh, spend a gold. Let's see. Let's spend a gold and buy something else. And we are going to, we could also buy more army counters if we wanted to. Do we wanna buy what? Portal is a great card that would allow us to invade anywhere on the board essentially. Marauders is great. Militia is fantastic. Uh, mercenaries are awesome, but it costs a gold every time you want to use those. Um, ideally, let's go ahead and purchase Marauders. So we are going to spend a gold and purchase Marauders, which as a free action, so this is not going to take one of our two actions, we can remove an army counter from a province. So, and you don't have to be involved in that province either. So if you see someone barely has enough troops to take over a province, on your turn you can play Marauders, get rid of one of those army counters, and that would screw that person, essentially, from being able to take over something. Of course, if you were involved in a province, you could also use that card to lower your opponent's military value as well. Okay, so with that being the case, let's go ahead and invade now. And I really do like the idea of moving north because with our capital here, we own the province to the south. There is a wall of mountains to the west. So the only vulnerable place we have is to the north. Let's go ahead and see. Obviously, we don't know what yellow has. Yellow could be able to defend themselves, but... In the off chance that they can't, we are invading from Eon. We have to use two food, which means this province food as well as this market food, because we're invading over a hill, and we are invading with the two armies that we had in our reserve from last time. So that's two armies from Eon into Dragonate. And that was our second action. First action was to buy those Marauders. And the next action was to invade. All right. So then we refill our hand. And it is over to Yellow, who is freaking out a little bit right now because they're looking good here, not so good there. All right. So let's do the first. If you are going to end a war on your turn... You have to make that your first action. So yellow's first action is going to be to end that war. All right, so they take their army counters off of there. They come right back. Blue loses that province. So they go down one, two, three. Yellow gains that province. So they go up one, two, three. 
They also gain an extra point, spoils of war, for having taken a territory over from an opponent, and then blue has to give them the territory card that they just won, and that'll go there. They immediately also refill their hand. All right, so yellow looked good for a second. Now they have to worry about this, but it's not terribly dire because don't forget they're in the highlands so that territory automatically gets plus one defense there's two armies there that's a two military value for red one military value for yellow they only need one to tie it up they do have an army here it's just a shame they didn't have that specific province card dragonate out here because then they could have built a castle there, but they have the bare minimum they need to defend. So as their second action, so yeah, they have to spend their last action of this turn just defending their own province. One card means one army, one army in Dragonate, boom, that province is defended. That's it, that's all they can do. They did two things, they ended a war and they added troops you don't need to spend food to add troops to a province that you already own. All right, so then it comes over to blue. Okay, what is blue up to? Last turn, blue built a city. What else did they do? Oh yeah, they also put a ship in these waters. So blue is a little pissed. Blue is pissed as hell. They just lost a province. But now, and it's a damn shame too, because now look at all the armies they have that they could have used to defend that province, and they didn't come up. Also, unfortunately for Blue, they have no food, which is a big deal because they can't invade any other provinces. If you look at the provinces that Blue controls, this one produces gold, armies stone stone that one had produced stone gold and stone blue has no provinces that produce food so blue's only food producing cards is that ship card they had and that market card they had and those have already been used so they are not going to be invading they do have some gold though Let's go ahead and spend a gold. Let's come over here and buy something. What can we buy? We need something that produces food. And, and there, is an, there is another market card here. It's functionally the same as the market card that comes in the deck to begin with. That would give us an extra food. But do we want to waste our purchase on that card if there's other better cards? The queen increases your hand size by one. So by default, you will have six cards to choose from on any given turn. That is a big deal in a game about what is in your hand, having a variety to choose from. But if, well, oh, that's tough. This diplomat card is awesome. As an action, you can spend a gold to just stop a war. So if you're being attacked, on your turn, you and a gold, you can spend an action and the gold to just end that war and you would retain control of that province. But I mean, there are a ton of fantastic cards here. The portal allows you to invade from anywhere, but it does have a food symbol up there as well, which could be used as a food in a, the event of that being absolutely necessary. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to spend that gold to get this portal card that'll solve, not solve, but it'll reduce our food problem, but also give us a decent card. So that's our first action. Our next action is what? Well, let's just go ahead and put all these in our reserve. Our reserve right now can handle a maximum of four cards thanks to building a city over there so we'll fill up the reserve we know we're going to use all those cards anyway so why not 
And now it's time to shuffle. Now this is fantastic because our deck ran out. We're going to shuffle our discard pile. And this is great because the cards we've purchased or the, the card we purchased is now in here. Our other food cards are back in here. Everything is back in here now. So we now are going to have a refreshed deck to draw from. And there we go. All right, so we have a lot of stone here for next time, which is not going to be the most helpful. But again, those can also be used as provinces to invade from. And then we also have food as well. All right, so blue is looking good. Blue is back to looking good. Red, however, is a little pissed. They did not want yellow to be able to defend themselves, and they have. So the odds were, just having looked at the board, yellow should have only had one extra army card. What were the odds of them having that in their hand? Well, pretty good, apparently, because they did. So they were able to defend themselves in that province, which means red, they're tied there right now. Red can't end that war. Red could, however, do something about it. They could add another troop there. But you know what? I don't know if Red actually wants to do that right now. Instead, because they can just leave that hanging for the time being. They're in no rush. They only have one army card. They could stick an army there. You know, chances are yellow could stick an army there. Well, you know what? Actually, as a matter of fact, Technically, they would know that yellow does not have any more army cards. They knew that yellow had this province that had an army. Actually, no, there is a third. There is a third card that has an army. Because one, two, three. I need to quit doing that. So they know they used an army card to add two troops there, an army and a province card to add a third troop there. That means they had two provinces left with armies on them. One they put there, and one must still be in their deck. Remember, they can't see the cards in their hand, so they'd have no clue. And their deck is almost out, so what are the chances this would be the last army card? Not too good. So red's like, eh, let's just hold off on that. Instead, we're going to do a couple other things. First of all, we are going to add our ship to the waters, throw ourselves in the running for becoming a master of the sea. Plus, we do have a province here that we may want to defend against because, you know, blue could be coming out of the corner here. Um, and blue has a ship there, which would add military strength to an invasion there. And they also have this province card so let's do some building what do we want to build we have two stone the build card and that province card with we could build a castle for one stone but why do that when we could use both of the stone and either turn that in town into a city or build a road between those two i like the idea of building a road because obviously this tactic here would be don't forget the game can end when four of those cards are out of tokens so if everyone keeps building cities that city card will go pretty quick so if someone did a city and now red wants to do a road it's kind of splitting up the cards but that's not a terrible idea plus a road will give red the flexibility of being able to use this province in that province to go for future invasions and future building opportunities. So let's go ahead and do that. We're building a road from Scombroid to Blore. We control them both so we can put a road there. We also get this road token. So red is now two points richer. And that's that. Red is out of cards. So they are going to shuffle up this deck of cards. And they have made some fantastic purchases. So not only are they going to have a pick of, you know, the other cards they've already had, which have been pretty good, but also now the cards they've purchased are getting shuffled in here, and we'll be seeing them soon. So first up, we have the market. We have the marauders we purchased earlier. We have 
a food card, we have the cavalry card, and we have a gold. All right. Now the bad news here is we don't have any troops, but we have marauders, so that is good news. And we have cavalry. This could be very interesting. Depending on what yellow does, let's head on over to yellow and see what they do. Yellow is pissed as hell. Yellow added troops there. They are happy that red did not, but it's a stalemate there still. In fact, they are elated that red added no more troops there because yellow has no more troops. And if red had added even one more troop there, yellow would have been out of the running. All right, so instead, what is yellow going to do? Yellow has several fantastic possibilities here. Nothing involving invading, unfortunately, but they could make purchases, they could build. They still don't have that Dragonate card, I assume, did we spend that early on? Yeah, that was the first card that we used this game was Dragonate. So that's not coming back anytime soon. The reason that would be helpful again is because we could build a castle there if we had that card. All right, instead, we could put our ship out, which is not a bad idea because things are getting uh, navally down south here. We only have one territory there we would really care about. We do have two up there, and that would help us going north against that dragon. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna play our ship card, launch our first ship into this lake, and then what? We could use this market card to go buy something, or we could use a build two stone and this card to build something up there. I like that idea. Why? Because Welkin, where our capital is, that card is not going to be as helpful to us as an invasion card or even as a build card because there's nothing, well, a build would help, but an invasion, that we've already claimed the territory that Welkin could invade from. Welkin, of course, the card is an, an army card, so that would, those are always useful, but we could build a road, is the point I'm trying to make. Build a road from Hatchel to Welkin. That way, either of those cards could be used interchangeably. That is not a bad idea. It would give us two more points. We could, of course, build a city in Hatchel, too. Cities are good for increasing our reserve. Or we could just hold off and just buy a card. Is there anything else over there we want? Warehouse makes your reserve explode, essentially. Allows you to place a card in your reserve for free also. We are about to redraw cards. So... Buying that warehouse, putting in the discard pile. Normally, you buy a card, put it in the discard, and wait and wait and wait until you're out of cards, and then reshuffle and potentially get the benefit of the newly purchased cards. But here, we are about to reshuffle. So buying a new card right now would be a fantastic timing to do that. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. Philosopher is also a good card because that allows you to draw three. Because these cards, these cards you can purchase, there's a whole deck of those. We only see 16 of them each game. This Philosopher, as a free action, allows you to draw three that aren't in this game and pick one to have. And I'm telling you, folks, there are some fantastic cards not in this game that are still in that deck. But it's kind of a crapshoot. It's kind of a mystery box. So we could buy that card, we spend a gold, and maybe get something good out of there. But the warehouse, you know what? The warehouse is guaranteed to be good. And in a game that is about cycling through your deck, the warehouse is a fantastic tool. So let's use the market card for its gold. We are going to purchase the warehouse. In short, it says it increases the capacity of your reserve by two, 
So right now we would go from three cards to five cards. Plus, as a free action each turn, you can add a card to your reserve. Don't forget, normally, in order to add cards to the reserve takes an action. The warehouse would let that be a free action. So let's go ahead and do that. That's our two actions. We added a ship and we purchased the warehouse and boom, refilled one card. That means we are shuffling this deck and we will see what we have coming up for that fifth and final. Obviously, if this was the warehouse, that would be amazing. The only problem with the actions that we took this turn is we actually probably wanted a military card to come out here and a military card did not come out which means and I did that math wrong in fact when if I was thinking red was trying to count up the military cards that yellow might have had they forgot apparently that they that yellow had just conquered no wait they already had that one so yeah they should have had more military cards just to clarify, they have Tally and Welk, and they now have this general. But those are the three that they had, and apparently they did use these before. In fact, they may have used, oh, that's right, they used Darb, not for the military card, but to invade from there. So Yellow had used all their military cards. Red honestly should have known that and would have then added a troop there but no harm no foul because yellow couldn't do anything about it anyway so now red will get another opportunity to do that hoping that yellow with this draw isn't an army card and it's not but it is dragonate uh-oh what does that mean well next turn yellow could build a castle over there but anyways over to blue what is blue up to Blue just reserved all those army cards and that gold. What do they want to do? They have some gold. They have lots of stone. They wish they had a build. You know, Blue has so much stone. They did just lose one, but they have all three of these stone plus this market of stone. Buying that extra build would be a fantastic idea. But, on the other hand, let's hold off on that probably. Well, no, we could still use, okay, let's, let's do that. I'm going to use this gold out of the reserve, and we are going to purchase this build. Because we are about to potentially reshuffle this as well in a little bit because of all those cards we stuck in the reserve. This Having multiple builds is great because builds can be used as a build, but also it also counts as a stone for maybe other build cards. So now blue is going to be building like crazy, which is definitely a great way to get points. Okay, so, but the next thing they want to do is do they want to put a ship out? Putting a ship out would give them two ships. They'd only need one more to become master of the seas. Or is it time to invade? And it may very well be time to invade. Now, let's see here. What do they, okay, Shog is here. You know, is there any way they could target someone's Citadel? No, because the Citadel placement was honestly pretty good. Yellows is up here. You have to go through Hatchel just to get there. Unless you had the portal, which I believe is in here somewhere. But for now, yellow's safe. Red is pretty safe as well. The Citadel placement for their capitals was honestly pretty good. So no, we can't go after anyone's citadel at this time. Oh boy, what do we want more of? That's true, you know, we did say we wanted more food. What the hell did we use? We used that Nesh card. You know what? Let's say we didn't. Let's say we used this market card as that gold. Because thinking this through, invading from Nesh would be 
actually a great idea because then we can go up here to Japosia, which is a food. Let's go ahead and do that. So we are going to invade from Nesh. Unfortunately, we do have to use our ship card for its food value. So from Nesh with food, Japosia has a military strength of two, so we need at least a three. So army card would be a fantastic card to use for that. So there's two armies. We need at least one more. So now the choice is, do we put them both there? Because we did see red pick up this Marauder's card. Of course, we don't know it's in their hand right now. But that Marauder's card could strip us of one of our army counters somewhere. If we had just enough armies there, and on red's turn they decided to be an ass, and use that Marauders to get rid of one of our army tokens, then we'd be stuck there another turn. But we figure at this point, red isn't going to care about that. So let's just go ahead and use one of these. That'll keep one in our reserves. Boom. So there's three. So that means we are invading from Nesh north to Japosia with three armies. That is fantastic. All right. So these all go in the discard pile. Draw up, and there's a build, which is fantastic, and more gold. So blue has multiple things they can do next turn. Back over to red. Okay, so what's going on in Dragonate? We are still tied up there. Red says, you know what, let's, th this is enough. Let's go ahead and get, let's stop this now. Marauders, as a free action, re we're removing this yellow army counter as number one. Number two, we are going to, oh, what should we do as our second action? We should, let's go ahead and buy something, honestly. What do we want to buy? Um, we know we're going to be doing a lot of invading, so let's use this gold to purchase militia. So what militia does is it can be used as just an army or as a free action. You can add an army counter to your available stock from this. So instead of spending a gold on an army, as a free action, you can just add one. That's good because as we get more and more armies that are invading, you're limited to how many armies you can add by the number of counters you have. So that was our, that was a, a, our first actual action. Free action was to get rid of that yellow army. First actual action was to purchase militia. Second actual action. Let's just go ahead and put all three of these in our reserve. Our reserve for red is three. So we're putting all three of those in reserves. That's where cavalry belongs because cavalry is a reserve card. That means you permanently put it in your reserve. And as long as it's in there, you get that ability. So it's plus one military strength when invading for the rest of the game as long as you leave that in your reserve. It, so that basically does mean it takes up a slot in your reserve forever, but the benefit is fantastic and it increases our military strength there. So right now, red has three to yellow's one. So if yellow wants to keep that province, they're going to have to add at least two military strength to it. And we just drew up to our five, and now it's yellow. So yellow's pissed as hell. What else is new? Dragonate is the hot topic of the day. They have no armies, but they do have the ability to build a castle. And that's what they're finally going to do. Castles only cost one stone. So there's the Dragonate's the province. Build one stone to build a castle. Take a castle marker, put it in Dragonate. That adds two to the military value there. So it is back to being three to three, plus yellow built a castle. So they get an extra point for that. And red continues to be pissed as hell. Probably even more pissed than yellow is at this point. And then yellow only has two cards here. They're both foods. Food is not a bad thing to have, but 
Let's just go ahead as our second action, we are going to add both of those to our reserves. Yellow also still has a reserve of three. Boom, because our turn's over, we're redrawing. Our warehouse came out, which is great. We're hoping for some armies here. All right, there is an army. So assuming that red doesn't add more than one there, we are golden. Red, of course, has other ideas. All right, yellow is done, blue. Blue is going to be building, folks. Well, first, let's go ahead and end that war as the first action. They've ended this war. They have conquered Japosia. Boom. They go up one, two, three points, and they find Japosia in the deck. Add that to their discard pile. They do not get a Spoils of War token because they did not claim that province from another player. It was a neutral province. All right, so that was our first action, was to end that war. Second action, we can buy a card or we can build something. Let's, let's uh, build something, honestly. What can we build? Or, you know what, yeah, let's build. What and where do we want to build? Well, we have Malborge. We have... Margent, we have Shog. A road cannot be built at this time. Based on those provinces, we also have Trogol, but Trogol's separated there by mountains, so we can't build any roads. So whatever we do decide to build here, well, we have Diclesium, which is there, but we kind of want to keep that army card. Plus, it's not adjacent to any other blues either. Yeah, blue is really separated from themselves. So we're not building roads. So whatever we build here is either going to be a castle, which, again, typically I don't build castles unless it's in the heat of the moment where I know that would help us defensively, like we're already being invaded somewhere. Or if it looks very likely that somewhere is about to be invaded, then we can add a castle there. But more than likely, we are going to build a city. Now, where do we want to build a city? Probably somewhere where... It's easily defensible. Shog. That's what we're going to do. We're building a city in Shog. Why? Because there's no enemy adjacent to us. Plus, it is kind of an island of highlands. Because there's that one dark spot around all this light. So that's already plus one military strength. Let's go ahead and build. So in Shog, we are building with two stone a city. That's going to open up our reserve even more. We can now hold five cards in the reserve there. Plus, each time we get one of these towns back, it is an extra town. That's an extra province we can take over. Because once you're out of towns, you can still invade other people's provinces. But once you win, you, you don't get any benefit from taking it over. No extra victory points. You'd still... Uh, Actually, I don't even think you would get spoils of war from that because you're not taking control of that province. But So that's why it's good to have these extra towns. So that was an extra city. So boom, that is another city token. Two more points for blue. And the city card is starting to get empty of tokens. All right, so that was our two actions. We ended a war and we built another city. So... Boom, oh, there's our portal. And then we shuffle this deck to draw the other three, and they'll be over to red. And I'm telling you, red is pissed as hell at this point. Why? Because they know that Dragonate province should have been claimed by them long ago. All right. So blue, boom, 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 draw back up to five. Someone needs to buy that queen card and get their hand size to six, honestly. All right, so back over to red. Red can't end that war yet. So what are they going to do? They're pissed, folks. They are going to add troops. They have two troops to add. They need food when they're adding troops to a province they don't own. 
We have multiple food cards, so the question is which one do we want to use? Will we ever want to use quarry fee for anything in the near future? Probably, but at this point it's the least versatile of all the food cards we have out here right now. So let's go ahead and use the food and two troops to add two more troops to Dragonate. So now, when you add up the military strength, we have one from our cavalry, plus four is five. Yellow gets one from their being in the highlands, plus two from their castle, that's three. So it's five to three. Hopefully yellow cannot add two or more troops or do anything to affect red's troops. And then when it comes back to red, they can finally take over that territory. But in the meantime, what else do they want to do? They are going to deploy their second ship. They are going to be the first one to deploy that second ship. And where are they going to put it? Well, that's a good question. Because what are they going to want to do next? Where is their capital? Over here. So ships won't affect their capital at all. If we ever want to take over Blue's capital, we are going to need more ships there. And that is not a bad idea, honestly. Let's load up the ships there. That'll give us two military strength if we invade any of these coastal regions, including Nesh, because the bottom of Nesh is part of this larger southern ocean plus that'll give us two military strength already when defending that one down there that we already own okay so that was our two actions we added troops and we deployed our second ship so we will refill our hand and oh yeah if yellow decides to do anything we have three more armies we can place and have the food to feed them the problem is we only have two army counters left. So in all actuality, we do not have as much flexibility there as we would probably like. But now it is over to yellow. Let's see how yellow responds. Okay, yellow. Yellow's pissed. They were hoping red would not do that because they only have one army, that's not gonna be enough. So yellow says, that's it. Of course, they don't say that verbally, but internally they're saying crap. All right, so we're, we're giving up on Dragonate. What else do we wanna do? Obviously, we're gonna to wanna to stick the warehouse in the reserve, open up that reserve for us. But in addition to that, what else do we want to do? Let's buy a card. We have a market card here. We're going to spend a gold. And what are we going to do? Yellow is going to become the most versatile player in the game. They are going to buy the queen. So what does this mean? The queen increases your hand size by one. So for the rest of the game, they're going to be able to have six cards out here. They're going to be cycling through that deck. And because their warehouse is gonna make their reserve gigantic, the queen's gonna make their hand gigantic, they are gonna be able to do whatever they want. All right, so for the next action, we're gonna spend our second action putting that warehouse in our reserve. We only had a capacity to put three cards there. Now, we have a capacity to put five there. Let's go ahead and put a fourth one there because we can add one for free as a free action now because of the warehouse. We know we're going to want troops. So let's go ahead and stick a troop up there. And there is pros and cons to doing that because then that shows your opponents that you do have a troop. So they may that may influence what they do. But in this case, yellow already has two food up there. Well, they'll stick a troop up there. It's kind of a warning flag, kind of actually kind of saber shaking, saying, see what we've got. Don't come after us because we do have the ability to defend ourselves and you don't know what else we have. So now we're going to refill our hand. We can't refill it to six yet until the queen is in our reserve. So we just refill it to five for now and boom, look at all those armies, look at all the food. 
Yellow is pissed as hell, and they are going to go for it on their next turn. But now it's blue. So blue's, blue's kind of the peaceful one. Apart from getting railroaded by yellow early in the game, they've kind of done their own thing. They've built cities. They've conquered neutral territories. What do they want to do now? They have a couple options here because they do have two troops. They have a portal that would allow them to invade anywhere. They also have gold they could spend on more cards. So what do they want to do? Well, there's actually a couple things. But first, I think they want to buy a card. They're going to spend that gold. Is that the gold they want to spend? Yeah, let's spend that gold. Well, I don't know. Because it would be kind of nice to invade from there to here. Because obviously they don't know red has all this stuff. Uh, but no, they honestly probably shouldn't use that in case they have to build a castle here later from red's invasion. But they really want, you know what, let's not do that. Because I was going to say... I was going to buy the Philosopher. That's the card that, as a free action, you can draw from those, that deck three cards and keep one. But that's a crapshoot. And honestly, if we're playing a bit cautiously, and, you know, each of these players has their own identity. Blue is kind of the more cautious player. They are not, they would not do that. They know Trogle is kind of in danger over there. So we're leaving that here. We also have stone. All we need now is a build card, which they have two of, don't forget. So hopefully a build card will come up and they can build a castle there if need be. So that's not what they're going to do. Instead, they are going to invade, however, with this portal. So the portal will let them invade anywhere. The market is going to be the food and they have two troops. Where are they going to invade? This is literally anywhere on the... Where do they want to go? Of course, you're thinking probably here, right? Well, again, the dragon adds plus four, so that's a seven. They do have a ship, so they would have one, two, three. They would need five more to get eight in order to conquer that. That's just not going to happen at this time. What do they want to do here? Anything here? Um, they can't build anything, so it was really the spoils of war or attack somebody's citadel. Whose citadel do they want to attack? Well, both of the opponent's citadels are in the highlands. Looking at the cards up top, they do see yellow has an army. Red does not. Cavalry doesn't help you when you're defending, so that may be the place to go. And they know that Red has spent a lot of troops there. Oh, boy. That's a tough one. It doesn't have to be a capital, though. Always remember that. It does not have to be a capital. Instead, they could come right here to Camarine. That would give them more food, which they need. And... A quick, easy victory, because it's a coastal region where they have a ship. So adding these two troops here means, boom, three military strength. That's all they need. Next turn, they can conquer that. All right, that's what they're going to do. That was their two act. Uh, no, that was only their first action, because we didn't buy anything. Do we want to buy something, or do we want to reserve these? Again, it's showing your hand when you reserve cards. But... Let's go ahead and do that, because that tells Red, hey, we could build a castle there, potentially. So don't come attack us there. All right, so, and that also now lets us draw five cards. And look, we absolutely would not be bluffing, because 
we actually drew both of our builds. All right, back over to Red. Red can finally say, end this war. All right, so Red takes back all four of their troops. They also get to replace the yellow town with one of their own. That was Dragonate. Yellow has to give Red this Dragonate card. Yellow loses one, two, three, and red gains one, two, three, four, because they've also got that Spoils of War token. All right, that castle stays there now. So this is a fantastic defensive location for red. Red's Citadel, barring that portal card, red Citadel is so well protected right now. They have a, that's three defense in Dragonate, and they have a defensive hold south, and they have a mountain to the west. All right, but anyway, that was their first action. What do they want to do now? They're feeling, you know what? They, Red, if they each have an identity, Red's identity is they are pissed as hell, and they are going to invade somewhere because... They have the ability to do that. They have this cavalry card, plus one military strength when invading. They have three armies, so that's four right there. Five, six, if you include those two ships, if they attack somewhere on the coast. So ideally, they're going to be attacking from somewhere either here, here, or here, none of which are by the coast, though. You know what? <clears throat> They may actually just want to go after this dragon now because that is one of the weaker dragons because it is four plus two, six. They just need seven there. They would have four already. So they would only need three more. But again, it's a situation where if they do that, the other players see them spending all those troops there and they would lose those army counters there for a while. But what else do we want to do? So Queen is here. We could go north to Leah because if we claim Leah, that is another province that has an army card in it. You know what? We, ha we have Grimp. We could come down here to Darb. And try to attack Darb from Yellow. Does Red want to keep picking on Yellow? Well, yellow has a ship there, so yellow would already start out with one. They do see yellow has Darb. Who knows, they could build a castle there, they could put more troops there. So let's not attack Darb. We also have Omsk, which is way up there. Um, we have Eon, which is our capital. We actually don't have a lot of fantastic options for invading right now maybe we do go after yellow but we go after one of their weaker ones honestly it doesn't look like from any of the cards we have here that blue's in any danger well you know what we could actually attack from queen and go leah or sorner Sorner would give us more food. But Leah would give us that extra troop. My only fear with that is we would still need more. We'd still need another army. You know what? Let's just do it. Because like we are we want more armies, right? Alright, so we are going to from Queen with a food from the market. We are going to be sending three armies into Leah. That defensive thing doesn't add any, so the number there is already taking into account the fact that it's the Highlands. And that is our second action. We ended a war and we have invaded another land. All right. 
So we won't be able to end that war next time. We still, don't forget, we do have four military value there because three armies plus our cavalry. So we just need to add one more army there. Hopefully out of the two cards that we're about to draw, now that we're reshuffling this deck, one of them will be an army card. Boom, there it is. And there's also Marauders. So we actually have a couple good options here in case we are attacked. We can ignore Leah and then also be able to reduce their troops and add one of our own in case someone tries to attack us with like two troops, for example. Or three troops in one of our Highland territories. Which, by the way, we're doing a fantastic job of controlling a lot of territories in the Highlands, which are much easier to defend. Okay, so back to yellow. Folks, yellow is loving life right now. They have a huge reserve. They have tons of food, tons of armies. They have ships. What do they want to do here? They kind of want to launch another ship. Let's go ahead and do that, actually. Let's do that right now. Why? Because we are going to launch a ship here. That is going to add to the defense of Hatchel. Just in case someone tries to come after the Citadel, Hatchel is now better defended with a ship there. Plus, that's our second ship. If we can get out a third, of course, that means we'd have to buy one first. That's the same with red as well. If Red ever wants to get a third ship out there, we'll have to buy one first. Extra armies only cost one gold, but extra ships cost two. All right, so that was our first action. Yellow is honestly in a fantastic place to do some damage here. Where does yellow want to go? Hmm. You know what? Yellow wants to go north on the west coast. From Custis, which is here, north to Omsk. That, if they win, would get Red's uh, an army card from Red. They could alternatively go south. And go after Peened. Peened. You know what, I think they are gonna go after Peened instead because Red obviously is dealing with that, but you know, maybe they're just tired of dealing with Red and they can come down here and the ship is gonna add plus one military strength there already. So they just need to add three. They do have four armies though, but that way they can keep one safe for now. All right, so what do they want to do? Well, let's see here. Let's go ahead and, yes, we're attacking from Custis. We are going to use Hatchel as our food source. We are going to use this army card, and we're going to use this army card that allowed two armies. So from Custis with food, three armies, and that way... They do not know that we still have an army card down here. So that's three armies in Peen. Military strength total of four because of the ship. So next turn, we should be able to conquer that territory. Now, our warehouse lets us put a card in reserve. Do we do what we do last time and put the an army card in reserve to let everyone know we do have the ability to defend ourselves, stay away from us? Or do we keep that hidden in our hand I mean, it does no good to, because there's nothing up here that would let us win defensive battles. So, you know, luring people in to attack us does us no good. So it's almost better to kind of wave people away. So as our free action, we're adding that army card up there. That way, again, we have a much bigger hand. And we have, oh, we have some fantastic cards here now. And we get to reshuffle this deck and draw two more. If this ends up being the queen, next turn we can put her in the reserve as well. And then we are on easy street, folks, if you are a fan of player yellow. All right, give that a shuffle. Two more cards. One, two. There we go. 
perfect. No queen yet, unfortunately, but that is yellow. All right, blue. Boom. Blue is going to end this war because of the ship in two. That's three. That's more than that, too. So, once again, blue has taken over a territory there. So, Camarine. That is another food territory, which blue does need. More importantly, though, that's just an extra three points. One, two, three. All right, now what do they want to do? Again, we want to kind of start getting rid of some more of these counters. So we could get rid, do a ship, and we could buy another ship. That would be handy. We probably don't need to do that just yet. We can build more, though. So let's do this first. Let's put another ship out here. Where do we want to put this? Where do we want to put this? I want to go up against reds. You know what? Red made a mistake. It's not necessarily a mistake, but they put two ships in the same sea, which kind of puts them out of the running for the Master of the Seas. So blue is not going to make that mistake. They're going to put it in this, so that's a dividing line. That way their capital is now defended by two ships on the two seas, plus this area here that's protected by a dragon now is weakened with two ships there, plus the, anything they get on the coast is now protected by two ships. So there's their first action. Second action is going to be to build. And what are they going to build? And more importantly, where? Oh, boy. You know what? They are going to build in their capital, Citadel of Nesh. They're going to build a road using a build card and two stone. They are now going to build a road between their capital and Japosia to the north. That gives them another two points, one, two. So peaceful little blue is now taking off with the lead. All right, so that was it. Those two actions, ended a war, built a road, draw back up to five. And we need to shuffle the discard pile for that fifth card. All right. And then it will be back over to red now on red they need more troops there in leah they need one more troop and they do have one more so is that what they do because they could also build they could do some building where's blore right here they could build in blore Or they could build in Grimp or Eon. They could build a castle in Eon. Uh, let's see. They could be a real dick to yellow. If they play this Marauders card... Remove one army counter from any province. They could say remove one yellow counter from there, and then yellow would be negative one, you know, one less than they need to take that province over. So they'd have to spend another turn to add more troops there. But I mean, that's just, honestly, that's kind of a waste of that card. So we won't do that. But we do want to add, let, you know what, let's go ahead and do it. This is going to leave us, you know, there's no guarantee we'll draw more armies. That was our only army card. But let's go ahead and add an army to Leah. Honestly, I would like more gold to buy more of those. But we don't have it. So we can build something. Or we can add these to our reserves for right now. Let's add these to our reserves. Now, why am I choosing these two cards? Because there's a build and there's Eon. That's our capital. So we know that somebody over there has a portal. 
So if they were ever trying to think about attacking us here, well, all we would need is one brick because we have a build and you could build a castle there. Um, but we're not building a castle there yet. And that ends our turn. We added, oh shoot, we could not have added that army. Why? Because we had no food. All right, so instead of doing that, we are kind of at a stalemate there for right now. All right, well, we can't do that. What can we do? Well, we can build in Blore then. That is what we were thinking about doing originally. Because I, because, you know, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're building in Blore with two bricks. Why are we doing that? Because I want to build a city. Cities will give us more points, plus it'll expand our reserve. We already have this permanent card in our reserve, so that effectively takes up a slot. Now this will not only give us two more points for building a city, but also increase our reserve capacity. Now, as our second action, because that was only our first action, we could put this in the reserves, but do we want people to know we have this? That's the question. No, let's keep them guessing. Because, you know, on one hand, it would be neat to let them know that we had that, because that would force them to, if they were attacking us, attack with one more than they thought they may have needed. But on the other hand, maybe we don't want to give that away. All right, so there's some gold there, which is good. No food though still. That is a damn shame. I did not realize, well, did I know Red was that low on food? You know what, maybe we did. Maybe we did know that because, God, where the hell is that supposed to be? What uh, do I have here? So I have Grim, I have Eon, I have Blore, I have Dragonate, Frampold, Queen, and Cory Fee, yes, Scombroid, yes, and Ops. So this was actually, this must have been one we removed, I guess, at some point and just didn't uh, put back in the bowl. All right, so then back over to Yellow. Yellow's like, thank God, we have now taken over Peened. We are back in it, folks, one, two, three, because we were falling behind a little bit. But now we've taken over Peenid. Get that card out of here. That is going to be another army card we can use in the future. All right. So that was that. That was End That War. That was our first action. Second action. We have a ton of armies right now. God, I wish we could go after one of those dragons at some point. Agdad. Where's that at? Agdod, right there. That's nowhere near a dragon. Fadges, right there to right there. We would need a seven military strength there though. We would have one, two, three, four, five. But it's like, God, you wanna go after those when you know that other players could see you spend all that army value and then they could attack you. Instead, let's see what else we could potentially do here. We have one food. We could attack from Ogdod or we could attack Corifi. Do we need more food? Does yellow need more food? Yellow has two food there, two food cards there, and that's it. So maybe they do want another food. So instead of going for the easy Sorner there, maybe they go after red, because that would be worth an extra point. Do we tempt fate?
Mm, you know what? Let's not. Why? Because that'll keep troops in our reserve for right now. Well, you know what? Because they have three army counters. So if we go after them with one, two, three, four, five, six, with that, they could only counter with three, plus maybe a fourth with a ship, plus maybe get rid of one of ours with their marauders, assuming they had that. We don't know that. Plus, let's say they buy another army of their own. That would just tie us. That is assuming all of those things happen. I think it's a good shot. We go for it. Let's be a little aggressive here. So we are going from... We are going from Oddoed with food with one, two, three, four, five troops. Five troops, we're adding this to our reserve and we are gonna have a whole bunch more we can put out there, but let's do this. Five in Cory fee, which means we have a military value of six there now. And look at this, we'll have food and more troops to put there next turn if need be. We also could put another ship out next turn. Even more food, more gold. All right, things are looking fantastic for yellow right now. And the gold's good because we would need uh, more gold to put get more army counters. All right, blue. What's blue doing? What is blue up to here? Blue just took over that, put more ships out. They want to buy another ship. That's what they want to do. Let's go ahead and buy another ship because we can get one of those master of the seas as soon as we put out a third ship. So, God, that's tough, though, because that, look what that does. You know what? Let's not do that because those armies, we may need to defend ourselves. So let's not do that yet. Instead, what I'm going to do is use this gold and I'm going to buy this gold mine. This is another card, just like cavalry or warehouse. It's permanently put in your reserve and it lets you turn any one resource into gold. So if we had cards that had stone on them or cards that had food on them, as long as gold mines in our reserve, it lets us turn one of those into gold. That's more gold cards, that means. That'll make it a little easier to maybe buy more ships and stuff. All right, that was the first action. Second action, we could build. We have two builds and a thing. Let's do it. Let's, yep, 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 yep. We're going to spend both of our builds. So in Japosia, because this will be a fantastic place to build a city. It's easily defensible there. It's hard to attack across water because you need to have a, sh you need to play a ship card to attack across water. Each of us only has one ship card. All right, so in Japosia, we're using a build and two stone, we're using our other build card for its stone value. That's th that's two stone build card Japosia. And we are building a city in Japosia. That is another two points for blue. And that city card is getting whittled down. All right, so that was it for blue. They purchased a card and then they built a city Blue can now hold six cards in their reserve, should they need to. All right, and we have a lot of fantastic stuff left. We have cards here for gold, get another ship out, and we have a ship card to put another ship out. So assuming yellow doesn't do it first, and they can't because they don't have enough gold to buy another ship. So blue's looking pretty good. Of course, blue doesn't know that. But blue's looking pretty good to being a master of the sea. All right, so red is scared to death of what's happening here. 
All right, what can Red do to put a stop to that right now? Well, they wish they had this diplomat card that would let them just cancel a battle out, but they don't. They have Marauders, which would get rid of one of Yellows, and they have this Militia card that would allow them to add one of their own. So what would that be? They, I mean, they Yellow put all of those troops there, assuming that Worst case scenario, Red would somehow be able to put out their three remaining armies, plus maybe put a ship out there, plus get rid of some of Yellow's armies. But no, not really none of that can happen here. At best, Red can add one troop and get rid of one of Yellow's. There's no chance in hell of that happening. Red is just going to have to give up there. So instead... What does red want to do? Well, you know what? Let's condense these a little bit. So here is the seven cards left that can be purchased. And red does have some gold here. Red is going to spend a gold to purchase a card. Which card do they want? You know what? They kind of like that mercenary card. That's one gold for two mercenary counters as a free action. What is this? Is this my discard pile? All right, so that's what they did. They bought the mercenary card. They wish they could purchase another card because then they'd probably go for that diplomat, but can only purchase one a turn. So instead, we could put some stuff in our reserves. Oh, but you know what? Let's get some more armies out here. So we're going to buy another army as our second action. So boom, up, get one of those. But in addition to that, we're going to use this militia card for its free action. Add an army counter to your available stock. So for free, we're going to add another one. So we should be good on army counters for a while. And that was it for us. We redraw. The good news is we have food. We have more troops. Many more troops. So we should be good to go for Leah taking that over next turn. So then over to Yellow. Yellow says, end that war, Red. Yellow's, milita Yellow's military conquest paid off. Corey Fee now belongs to yellow so red has to look through their deck their discard pile where's quarry fee here it is give it to yellow yellow now takes over quarry fee yellow goes up one two three four because of the spoils of war bonus and red goes down one two three because they lost that province okay so that was Yellow's first action. What else does Yellow want to do? Well, they'd like to purchase a ship and get a third ship out there, but they can't. They only have one gold. So instead, they could build or they could invade. What do they want to do? Well, let's build. Let's build a city somewhere. Where is somewhere we could build a city that could easily be defended. Honestly, Cory Fee is looking pretty good. The place they just took over because there's no one around them to attack them directly yet. And they have a ship for defense. But we don't have the card. So we can't build there. We can only build somewhere where we have the card. So that is going to be Fadge. Which actually, Fadge looks good. Or Custis. Custis does get the defensive bonus of that ship, but Red could come south any second. And the danger of building a city where someone could take it over is if they take over where you have a city, the city gets put back into your reserve card, and so it lowers your reserve again. We really don't care about our reserve value, though, but we'd still rather put it somewhere that's easily defensible. So let's do that. 
but we can't because we need Fadge for its stone. So honestly, Custis, it's going to have to be because we want to keep Darb for the military value. So let's do Custis. We are going to build with the stone from Fadge and this market stone. So that is two stone to build a city in Custis which is two more points for yellow, ties now with blue, reduces the city down by a bit more. Okay, so, and we can put one of these up there in our reserve for free. Do we put an army up there? Or do we put a ship? Oh, we may not wanna tell everyone we have a ship. But I mean, it's like they know that eventually you're going to have a ship in your hand, an army in your hand, so it honestly doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and put an army up there just to show, in addition to whatever we have down here, we also do have an army, so, you know, steer clear of us. So that now is our free action for having the warehouse. We got to stick that up there. Finally, the last card was the queen. Once we can put her in our reserve, then our hand will jump to six cards and then we will really be cruising. See, and that's how quickly this game could turn around. Yellow was in far last place. They've jumped a tie with in first. All right, just shuffling yellow's discard pile, two more cards. Their reserve is also now six, thanks to the warehouse. Boom, boom, more food. Looking good, all right. Back to blue. Blue already knows what exactly they're doing. They're spending two gold to purchase another ship. And they are going to use their ship card to now deploy that ship. And they have to deploy it in a third separate ocean. Unfortunately, they lost Ogdode way early in the game, so they can't put a ship out there. But thankfully, they still have Mal Bolge and uh, what is that? Shog. So they are going to put a ship here because you can only put a ship where you have an adjacent province. And boom, they are now tier one Master of the Sea ships in three different sea areas. If they can somehow get hold of the province next to that ocean, they could potentially get the ships in four different seas. So they got two more points for that. And that was their two actions. Very quick, very easy, very peaceful turn from Blue, as Blue has been known for. And see, this portal is exactly what they need. Look at this array of cards. Not to jump ahead, but you, you we use portal with food and as many armies as we need. We have up to four armies here. We can portal ourselves somewhere over here by that lake, take over one of those provinces, and next time we have the opportunity, Buy another ship, launch it in that ocean, and boom, two more points, and Master of the Sea. All right, back to red. Red has four army value there. That province still has four, so we need one more. And it's time, honestly, to do that. We have food and two troops. We only need one, though, so which one's it going to be? Which one would we not want to take, potentially? That's the only question. Let's leave Scombroid and just do Omsk. All right, so a ship, well, we're not using the ship. We're using it for its food value. One troop, we're adding a troop here. So barring anything catastrophic happening, next turn, we'll take that over. And then now what? Now what indeed? You know what? Let's just add all three of these to our reserve. Boom. That way we can get some decent cards out here again. Who cares if anyone sees that we have, you know, a troop there, marauders there. If anything, that'll keep people the hell away from us for the time being. Red is getting picked on. All right. So next cards are fantastic. We have food, more troops. We actually have gold there so we can do whatever the heck we want, plus more troops, more troops. 
All right, so we could launch a huge invasion next time if we want to. All right, over to yellow. Yellow, what was yellow's plan? First of all, we want to get the queen up into the reserve, but we don't need to do that first because we may want to put other cards in the reserve with her later. So what do we want to do first, though? We don't have enough gold to buy a ship because we would like to launch a ship eventually. We have two troops and we have food. We also have gold. Why don't you know? Well, let's just spend the gold. Let's spend the gold. What do we want? There are still some decent cards here. Water Mill doubles the resources from any other card. So you could have two stone or two food if you want to go over a hill. Nicely, though, that would be two gold, honestly. That might not be a bad idea. Um, there's another market card, another just card to get stuff that we may need. Uh, Providence allows you to draw two cards from your deck as a free action. You know what? We are so good at filling up our reserve, having a huge hand of cards, being able to draw more cards. Yellow is just going to be amazing. Boom. That's what we did. We purchased Providence. All right. Next up. Next action is going to have to be to put stuff in our reserve. Well, we want to put the queen up there for sure. Why not make use of our reserve? We're just gonna put everything up there. We have a reserve of six. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use all of it. And now we get to draw, because of the queen, six cards. We're gonna need more room over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So that shows you what we've got. We've got a lot of food out here. So this is the kind of the time where we start saying to ourselves, maybe it's time to cull the deck a bit. Culling is where we will remove cards from the deck. We'll still keep control of these provinces, but since they're not helping us, we'd rather have more other cards. We want more military cards, if anything. Um, so maybe culling some of these foods out of there may not be a bad idea, but we'll see. Because we may want to use one of those from a, as a launching pad and the other as food, so it could still work out for us, but look at all this. All those options, all these options. It's, fan it's good to be yellow right now, but those are those two actions. So blue, blue just became master of the sea. They'd like to do that again, but oh yeah, here's what we're gonna do, right? We we're gonna invade one of those provinces that'll give us the ability to put a ship out there again next time. So, how do we wanna do this? I would have almost kinda liked to have kept this gold as one of the golds to purchase another ship in the future. But if we want to take over one of those lands, we would need more gold. But you know what? We actually are in, or more armies, but we are not in any dire need to do that fast. Plus, this will give us flexibility in case we're attacked. So let's go ahead and do this. Portal, food, two armies, and we are going to portal two armies over there somewhere. Where do we want to go? Okay, well, we could go to Mome. That would be the easiest one, because we'd only need one more troop if we attacked here. Because there's a two. When we would put two, we just need one more. We could go to Gallengale. We would need one more. It would give us another army card, though, if we did that. We'd have to put two more troops there, though. Or we could come up here. It would still mean we'd need to put two more troops up there, but it'd be easier to defend in the future. But honestly, that army card would be pretty nice. So let's, well, yeah, let's do that. We'll need to put two more armies there. And if need be, we can. Um, but let's, you know what? Let's just do it. We're going to be reshuffling this deck anyway. So we actually put four troops there. So barring, you know, Red getting involved with their marauders to screw us, next turn we will take over Gallengale. 
All right. Was that our first action? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we used our entire hand of cards to do that. Nothing. We literally have no other action we can possibly take. Passing is the only other thing we can do. We could... We don't want to remove ships. Uh, we don't have anything to discard. Remove one or two cards from our deck. I honestly don't think we want to do that, but in case we did want to do that in the future... Nope, we could only remove them if they were in our reserve or our hand. I thought maybe we could go through the deck and remove them, but no, we can't. So there's literally nothing else we want to do. So that is that. So we are passing our second action. Next two cards, and then now we are going to reshuffle this. It would be it would be absolutely glorious if we got some gold here, got our ship card, some combination of that. We're not going to be able to buy a ship and launch a ship next turn because we'll have to use our first action to end that war, but at least we can set up for the future turn. All right, boom, boom, boom. All right, look at that. We do have the two gold needed to buy a ship. So next turn, it's laid out for us again. We're going to end that war and buy another ship. And then hopefully not too far away, the other ship card will be there. We can launch that and get another two points. Okay, back to Red, who thankfully can now say end that war. Red now takes over Leah, which gives them... One, two, three points, and now hunts for the Leah card to add to their deck. I assume these three players are gender fluid, so him, her, whatever, red, now adds Leah to the deck. So that's an extra army card, which is fantastic. All right, but now what are we going to do with our second action? We are fired up. Red is ready to go. They have plenty of army counters now because they bought all those armies. They have tons of troops at this point. Okay, what do we want to do? Because potentially here... Oh, man. If we had a ship card, that would be awesome because then we could attack... A dragon here with our two ships plus our cavalry. And we would be able to easily wipe it out. All right, what can we do, though? That's the question. Because we have two, three, four, five, plus one. So that's six military strength wherever we go. At least. Because if we went somewhere adjacent to those troops, we would have eight army power that'd be crazy okay well we have queen which is here so we could go we could go here you know what let's do that let's attack here we would have almost what we would need to take that over right now so let's do that we're going from queen we're gonna use this market card for food we're gonna use two three four Five armies. Awesome. And go right here to Irikand. Where we're going to battle this dragon. So it's a two plus four for the dragon, six. We have five armies plus one from the cavalry is also six. So we'll just in the future need to add one more army there. And then we can take that over and also claim one of those here be dragon tokens. That'd be five points taken over that province now we have no extra armies though that is a damn shame we do have a ship we have some gold to buy another ship if we want we also have a build and a stone basically at this point though we have very little to defend ourselves with so hopefully people leave us alone knowing we have marauders and hopefully they think we have some troops in there as well okay so next up we are going back to yellow look at all this are you kidding me yellow is fired up what does yellow want to do now they have all this food so what do we want to do here We don't have enough stone to build. 
Because honestly, I would have liked to start working on building more. Is there somewhere where we can attack someone's citadel? We do have a ship. Do we have Custis out here? We do. Custis with a ship. We could attack Nesh. That would be oh so nice. And because their blue's going after Gallingale, we could sneak over here and attack their citadel. Oh my gosh. Oh man, the problem is we're n we wouldn't have enough to take it over out right because, well, without some tough, because the Citadel also adds plus two to the defense. That's why it's so tough to take over a Citadel. A Citadel... Just double checking. Yep, yeah, castles and citadels have military strength of two for the defender. So Nesh, I mean, God, it's going to be impossible to take over a citadel here because Nesh has two ships plus their intrinsic citadel two. So that's four right there, and we don't even have enough to break through that four. They could. We'd only have three troops we could put there. So that is no good. Uh, we do want to take over more other people's, though, to get those uh, other things. Is there somewhere else? Can we attack blue somewhere else where it's not so tough to do? Yes. Yes, 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 because we have Nusu. Nusu is where we'll attack from. It's right here. We can go up to Diclesium, which would be great if we got it, because then we would have that extra army card. Diclesium has no added defense, because there's no ships around it, no Highland bonus. So we're going from Nusu. We are going to use this Cory Fee card as food, and we are going to use all three of these, because we have no clue what Blue's military cards look like. All we know is that they have two army counters there. So Nusu with food, three troops, boom, into Diclesium. And that is, is that our first action? See, I talk so much I forget what we did. Okay, yes, I believe that was. All right, so that's what we did first. And next, I'm going to put both of these in my reserve. I'm just showing the world what we have here. I'm going to keep this build, I guess, secret. But that way, we can refill this hand of six, which means we are ready to shuffle this already again. Look at all those troops we have. Oh, man, we need more gold so we can buy more troop counters. The six just is not cutting it right now. Though we have plenty of stone if we want to build more. There's even more troops. All right, so then we move over to blue. Blue is like, what the hell do you think you're doing there? Blue, unfortunately, has no build where they could build a castle in Diclesium. They have no... They have two troops, which is not going to be enough, so they're going to have to let that go, unfortunately. So instead, they are going to do what they said they were going to do last turn, which is going to basically, you know, wash out in terms of points, but at least they'll have this set up. So they're going to stick to their game plan, end that war up in Gallingale, put a town there, Grab the Gallingale card, which is an army card. So even though they're going to lose one for losing Diclesium, they will still have this one. And then they do gain one, two, three. So for the time being, that's pretty good. And then their other action they were going to do was two gold. Well, do we want to do that yet? Or do we want to put stuff in reserves? 
We have a huge reserve. Let's just do just like what Yellow did. Let's put it all in reserve. Who cares if people see all the stuff we got? Just don't bother us. We have those armies there. We have that portal. We can go anywhere. You know what? We may not want to show that we have the portal. Let's just put those there. Of course, that's a little obvious, right? Like, okay, you just threw all those cards up there except one. I wonder what that one is. But anyway, that way, though, we do get to draw all of this. And see, boom, there we go, folks. And that's actually not a bad thing that just happened because instead of spending those two gold, which could have been used for other things, we now have these two strictly gold cards buy a ship, launch a ship, then we become master of the sea. So blue, you know what? They're not too upset. Back to red. Red has no troops. They can't take over Irican yet. So what are they going to do? They could build a castle somewhere. They could buy more cards. You know what? Let's do this. Frampold, we are buying the philosopher. When this philosopher comes up, that's where we draw three of these out of this deck and pick one. And they could be good. So we're just going to kind of take a mystery box kind of thing. And then what else? We could build, well, we can't even build because the only thing we could build out of this configuration is a castle in Dragonate. Dragonate already has a castle. So let's go ahead and put some stuff in our reserves. Let's go ahead and put a stone and the build card up in our reserve. That way people will see we have the ability to build a castle. You don't know where. That might deter people from attacking us, especially knowing we have marauders that could come out at any time. And we now have the mercenary card out here, which for a gold, which we do have a gold, we can add those two troops out there as well. Okay, so, and we also have food with this ship. So we can add more troops to Irikand. We could add mercenaries to Irikand. So no matter what, we are taking over Irikand and that dragon next turn. All right, next up, yellow. Well, yellow says in that war in Diclesium, Diclesium is now property of yellow. So a lot of stuff happens here. Number one, yellow takes the Diclesium card. Number two, they get a Spoils of War token. Number three, blue loses three. One, two, three, yellow gains four. One, two, three, four. All right, so we are getting down to some of the final things here. One Master of the Sea left. We know that's going away. Spoils of War, only two left, just two provinces of each other's get taken over. Those are gone. Two more cities get built. That's done. If someone can take over a citadel, that would be done, but more. But the dragon thing may be more likely before that happens. All right, so anyway, that was the first action for yellow, was ending that war. And oh my gosh, look at all those troops. Oh man, if they only had one more gold... They could put another ship out, or at least buy another ship, but they don't. They have a lot of troops, though, and they can attack anywhere. They could also build anywhere. You know what? Yellow is so fantastic. Yellow is going to build. Yellow's going to build. They can build anywhere they want, but, you know, where else could we build, maybe? Hatchel. We could build a road to Welkin. Um, Custis. We already built a city there. Agdad. No, we need that for the stone. Talion. But we want to keep those military cards. Well, unless we used... Well, let's use Hatchel. All right, so we are going to build a road. No, let's build a city there because we want to get rid of these tokens and because we're in the lead and we know that it's not going to be hard for us to keep the lead, honestly, I don't think. So let's try to end this game by getting rid of those city counters 
Hatchel is where we're going to build, and we're going to use two stone. Look at all, it's like a menu of options. Hatchel, build two stone to build a city right there, which is defended by one of our ships also, so that's great. All right, the second to last city counter is gone. Two more points. Boom, boom, boom. And as a free action, we can add a card up there. Which card do we want to add up there? Let's show off our military a little. Because it's going to have to be one of these militaries. We want to let people know that we have two more military. Why not? Stay away from us. We have at least two troops there. Plus, that could be reverse psychology. Maybe lure people in. Other people, blue or red, are like, oh, they're showing off two there, huh? That may be to try to keep us away, but maybe they have nothing else. Who knows? They're actually probably pretty afraid of us because we have all those cards in reserve. We are now going to be having all of this. I mean, look at this. This is crazy. This is insane that blue and red let yellow have all these cards. The warehouse to hugely build their reserves. The queen to have this huge hand of cards. Providence now. They're going to next turn as a free action. They can draw two more of those cards. They will have minus that one. Seven cards plus five up there. That is 12 cards they can pick from. Whereas everyone else, you know, has whatever's in their reserve and whatever's in their hand. So that is, well, 12 from, it's just crazy. It is absolutely crazy. All right. So anyway, here we go. Okay. So that was two actions there. Now it is over to blue blue is going to do what they said they were going to do originally they are blue is not out of it yet folks oh no 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 no. now which golds do they want to that's a question which golds they need two of them do they want to spend to buy that fourth ship because do they want to have anything for nesh nesh could be used at some point to build like a castle in Nesh. Keep the people out of there. Trogle is all the way over there by itself. The market. Let's use the market card. For sure. That's one of them. Which other one? Which other one do we want? Well, if we use another one from down here instead of that army card, this will allow us to put more cards in our hand. Trogle or Nesh? Let's do Nesh. Nesh has a lesser chance of being invaded, I think. Because if Red got crazy and decided to take out Trogle, it's all by itself over there. They may think about doing that. So, And we can keep Trogle there with some stones so we can maybe build a castle there if need be. So one, uh, the market gold and Nesh gold, in order to buy a fourth ship and as our second action, use our ship card to launch it in the lake next to our newly acquired Gallingale. Boom. They are now the ship in four different seas, master of the sea, the First card's been cleared. That's two more points for blue. Boom. Fantastic. Two more cards. There's a build. That's good. There's an army. So now we have food, a portal, multiple armies. We can start going after people. And we have a ship in every sea now. So no matter if you are all, if you are next to water, you are in danger of blue at this point. All right. Red. Red. Let's see. Well, yes. Now now we are going to end this. Well, hold on. Are we done there? We have three, four, five, six. No. We need one more troop there. <clears throat> and we do have that troop. Or do we want to pay gold to send the mercenaries there? Either way, we have to use our ship card. Oh, boy. The problem with the merci the militia is we could use that to get more troop counters. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. How do we want to do this? Mm. 
you know what, let's use the militia. We have those three army counters there. We're not gonna need more than three because the mercenaries will be their own counters. So yeah, that's not a bad idea. So we're using a food from the ship card and the militia to add one more troop there, boom. Now we can take over Irican next turn and now we can build, damn it. I wish we could build a city you know what? Actually, we mean Red may not want to speed up the end of the game yet because of how far behind they are. So instead of building a city like we may have wanted, let's build. You know what? No. Well, maybe building a city is not a bad idea. It'll stop those assholes from building cities. Because I was going to say we could build a castle. We could build a castle in Grimp or Eon, where our citadel is. That would only be worth one point, though. Oh, boy. But that citadel card is lingering. And if we don't want the game to end, we better defend our citadel. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build with a stone in Eon, where our capital is. Boom. Wait, what? Yeah, build a castle there. All right, so we have really boosted the defenses of our citadel. We'll get a point for having built a castle. And here is the castle. So now that is two for the Citadel, two for the castle, one for the Highlands. That is a five. You need to put five troops there just to equal our natural defenses. That's crazy. No one's going after that. Plus, and it, you may think, well, maybe they have cavalry uh, to, you know, give us a plus one bonus for invading. No, I'm sorry. Red actually has that card. Oh, well, maybe we could send mercenaries in there along with our normal troops. Oh, no, sorry. Red already has that card as well. Red is fantastic at invading. They need to do more of that. Once they're done with this, I mean, they have the military power, right? They have one army card. They have two, three army cards plus their regular army card, plus mercenaries. So we'll see. We may need to start doing some more invading of other areas that have armies, army cards available. All right, so that is it. That is their two actions. They added a troop and they built a castle. And now they will reshuffle their discard pile and draw one, two, three. All right, well, not too much military going on there, but they will in the future. All right, back to yellow, yellow. Good Lord, look at all those troops. So what'd they do? They built, no more building for the time being. Let's go ahead and use our Providence card right now. That'll allow us to draw two more cards for free one, two, and look at all this. This is insane. We've got to take over someone's citadel or someone's damn, or, or a dragon or something. We have no gold. Well, we have one gold, but we don't want to spend that. Wish Yellow had more gold so we could put out more ships, but we don't. Okay, but we have all these troops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we use the general, we only have six. Putting six troops into Red's territory would be enough to conquer it, but they have marauders to get rid of one. Then they can add more of their own. Or we can come down here to Nesh, which has two, three, four, to our six. Why not? 
Well, we see that they have two plus potentially more. <sighs> what do we do? We would go after a dragon. Um, you're not adjacent to any other dragons that can easily be attacked. And I'm saying from a province that doesn't, wouldn't cost us to spend a military card in order to get there. But we have seven troops. We gotta, I mean, obviously we could go after someone's other little one. Maybe that's what we do. You know, we just want to get this game over with. Let's just go after some easy points. So then what does that mean? Where do we go? Well, we have Cory Fee, which is there. There's no one around there we can get to except maybe Gallingale if we use our ship card. That's not a bad idea. That would be a, like a guaranteed win. And blue is second in line right now. Let's do that. Boom, we are going for Gallingale. We are going from Corifi with food, using our ship to cross that water to Gallingale. And we are going to send how many troops? We know they have two. So we are sending, well, you know what? Maybe we don't use that one. Well, we have this other card too, this general. We could go anywhere. It doesn't have to be Gallingale. Is there any other where where blue is not as easily defended? Or, you know what? Gallingale's a good one though, because that would eliminate one of blue's army cards and we would get that army card. Okay, yeah, let's stick with Gallingale. All right. So, but do, the question then, I guess, is do we use the ship card to get there? Or do we use the general to get there? We know they have two, plus probably more. We're just assuming. So, we want to put at least enough there. And do we just go all out? Well, because we could do this. We could add, we could use our ship. So we're Cory Fee with a ship, with food, four troops to Gallingale, leaving this one in our reserve so that people know that, you know, don't try to add more troops there because we still have two more, or don't attack us in the meantime because we still have troops. So let's do that. All right, let's do that. Plus, you know what? I like that because why? That's four troops in Gallingale. Not only that, we, if need be, because we only have two left, we could use that as a gold for a third and use this to send a troop out because that food is in our hand. Or at the very least, we still have two troops. So anyway, no matter what happens, that's what we're going to do. Now, that was, God, what even was that? Was that our first action or second? I think that was our first action because we used Providence to draw two more cards. Then we literally just spent seven cards sending four troops up there. Now we can add a card to our reserve for free, or we could add both of them as our second action. Because I don't know what the hell our second action would even be. Um, would we be okay? We can put this up there as a free reserve because that'll show them we absolutely could add two more troops no matter what with the food there. 
Do we leave the general in hiding because he can be used as a wild card when invading in the future? Let's do that. Let's leave some mystery. So then I guess we just pass our second action and boom, it's time to refill back up to six cards. Yellow is cruising through this deck of cards. It's crazy. They have quite an engine going here. So ideally, they're going to win. Spoils of War is almost gone. Someone's going to build that city. So then it's just going to be a question of what is the fourth card to run out? Well, we'll find out. One, two, three, four more cards. And look at that. We have a card that will let us draw two more cards. I guess ideally it's just an extra card because that takes the place of a card. But that's not bad. We have more troops. We have more gold to buy more troops. So, all right. So anyway, over to blue. Blue's freaking out a little bit because, you know, the ships negate themselves. And then there's no natural defense there. So it's four to nothing. Technically, it's five to one. Uh, so they are going to need four, and they just don't have it. They don't have anything. They have building opportunities, but they don't have the Gallingale card out to build a castle there to defend themselves. They only have three troops, which is one short of what they would need to tie it. So unfortunately, Gallingale's lost. Blue is pissed as hell. Gallingale is lost. So with that being said, let's do something else. Let's build the final city and we will get two more points and no one else can build cities. So we know we're building a city, which is going to cost these two stone in this build action. Now the question is where? Where, where, where? Troggle, probably not. Japoja already has a city, Oxter. But Oxter's a troop. We probably don't want to use the troop. Probably don't want to use this food. So let's, I guess we'll just do Troggle. Troggle is the card we've been holding on to forever because we're always afraid of red coming down here and doing something. But you know what? Who cares? We are going to do that. We're going to build the final city. You don't lose these victory points. Once the city's built, so now for the time being, blue is back, uh, is now tied for first. All right, now we can actually invade with three armies somewhere. Where it's just an easy place. We can use portal, we can go anywhere. Where do we want to go? And it can be somewhere very simple. We can take over, get an easy three points. Um... We know that they have two, probably more, so we're not going to target a yellow. Red is going to end that war. Would they have enough to defend a place if we attack them somewhere? Omsk would be the best place to attack red. And I think we do want to attack red because that'll give us that extra spoils of war point and red will be able to get rid of one of our troops we don't know what they have in their hand we know that they spent a lot there but they did just refresh their deck we obviously don't want to attack red on the coast where they have troops here we don't want to attack red anywhere in the highlands where they have castles where they have other things oh, you know what would have been awesome? Well, hold on a second. Because if we attack yellow in their citadel, yellow has the weakest citadel right now. It's a three, but we would only be attacking with three. Do we want a long, drawn-out thing that they may win and just waste our time? No. Let's attack red, though. Let's put three troops in Omsk because we have a ship in this water. So we would have a total military value of four. So we're using a portal with food, three armies to send them to Omsk. 
So we have military value of four there with our ship. And we'll see if red can do anything about that. In the meantime, that was all of our cards. So now we are redrawing. And in fact, we have our gold mine out here. We have the ability to build at least a castle at this point, which would be nice. If we, that general card's awesome because you can use that as any province when building even. So that would be the ultimate wild. A build, a stone, and the general. You could put a castle down there for two more military value at any time. That would have been a fantastic idea. Of course, yellow could, you know, use that at any time. All right, so boom, that was their two actions. Back over to red. Red can finally say, end this war. They had seven, no, they had six troops there, plus a cavalry. They were the first one to defeat one of these dragons. So, you know, you see how far down the scoreboard they are right now, but not for long because... Irikand is now theirs. They've eliminated this dragon. They get two points for the dragon, three points for Irikand. And they have more food now, which I think they needed. That's five points. One, two, three, four, five. Now it's not such a big gap. All right. Now what is the question? Now what do we do? Well, we got to defend up there. So blue has four troops there. We can get rid of one of them. Well, they have three troops there plus a ship. We can get one of their troops. That would reduce them to three military value. And we can add three military value. Let's do that because we don't want blue getting more. And we don't want to lose any more. So let's do it. We are going to spend a gold from the market to launch these mercenaries as a free action. Two mercenaries up there. We're gonna marauder them by getting rid of one of those blue counters. And we are going to add one, the only troop card we had right there. So that was our two actions. We ended a war and we added troops to defend ourselves. So now, Blue has one for the ship, two for the armies. That's three, and we have two mercenaries and one army, so that's three. So it's tied. So we're doing okay so far, and we have two troops more we could add if need be. All right. Over to Yellow, who now Yellow, unfortunately for everyone else, can say end that war. Yellow has now taken over Gallon Gale from Blue. So Blue loses three. One, two, three. Tied with red now. Yellow goes one, two, three, four. Because they got a Spoils of War bonus for taking over an opponent's province. And now Blue has to give up Gallon Gale. <clears throat> Blue, how many military cards does Blue have left? One. Oxter. I think that's it. Blue's military power is so poor at this time. They have their army card and they have an Oxter. They're going to need a miracle at this point. All right, so that was their first action. That was uh, Yellow's first action to take over Gallon Gale. Second action, we have so much. Yellow is amazing you can see what the diver the variety of cards allows you to do play providence is a free action boom draw two more cards all right so now we can go again we have two armies here two three four five armies plenty of food we can attack from anywhere what do we want to do because we want to get rid of another card we want to Maybe, a t maybe go after a dragon. Where is a dragon near us, though, that wouldn't cause us to have to use a... That house is on its side. That wouldn't cause us to have to use a military card. But if we have to, no true loss. Uh... 
Um, Og God, no. See, that's where roads come into play. We don't have any build. We don't have the ability to build a road right now. Because you could substitute provinces cards for each other when you do roads. Do we attack? No, we're, well, we could attack a province with the general. No, we couldn't. Because the general would still make us use one of our own provinces. So you can't just choose any province like you could with the portal. So what do we do? We are going to invade somewhere. I'd like to invade somewhere with a dragon because we want this game to end. Either somewhere with the dragon or somewhere where someone else is weak that we could take over and get that last spoils of war. Because that could be tied up up there for a while. So who do we want to attack? Do we want to attack red? Because if we attack red... Blue could try to do something there. Red would either have to go there or defend against us. They'd probably go there, I would assume, because they have more invested there. If we go after, oh, well, the whole, the whole point, though, is it's going to be hard to find somewhere that we can attack Red at that would be an easy pickings situation. Well, we could go up north there, It'd just be one more. Because where do we have to come from? Well, again, we have the general, though. We could literally try to attack anywhere we want. Like Irikand. Irikand is the weakest red on the board, apart from the one blue just targeted. We could use the general to say that we were attacking from Fadge. You know what? Let's do that. The general is replacing the Fadge province card. We're going to use the, let's use Cory Fee as the food and attack with one, two, three, four. Cause yeah, the general would have been nice to keep for five, but we had no other way to attack red easily. So let's just do that. Boom, boom, boom. That's four troops into Irikand. That was our second action. We're going to pop one of these guys up there for free. We're going to put the market up there for free. That way we can draw four more cards. One, two. Well, we can definitely build. Three, come on, this has to be an army card. Four, it is, thank gosh. Because that way we can at least defend ourselves a little bit if anyone tries to attack us, or we can add more troops there if need be next turn. All right, next up, blue is like, okay, so you're defending yourself there. Unfortunately, we don't have anything that we can do. Instead, we are going to put the gold mine in reserve, and once per turn, I can turn any one of these cards and have it count as gold. So, for example, if I want to buy something right now, I could, and if I turn it into gold, or I could build a castle in Camarine or Japosia. Japosia or Camarine. Castle would be worth a point. Or I could turn one of these into gold and buy a card. I'm not gonna be draw. I'm not gonna be reshuffling my discard pile anytime soon. So you can't even see some of those cards. Uh, so maybe not buying. Maybe buying a card right now is not the best idea. Let's go ahead and build a castle in Japosia. E no, because Japosia is probably not gonna be invaded. Let's build build one in Camarine. Though I doubt anyone would invade Camry either, because I have two ships there. Then let's do it in Japosia. All right, so we are you. We are doing the Japosia card, build card, one stone card. Boom. 
and building a castle in Japoja. Why? Because that's a point. That is a point, and that is a point for blue. All right, we are redrawing. So in case you cannot see, which you probably couldn't anyway because it's so far away, we have a gold, a gold, one army card, a build, and a food. So now we can add one more troop if necessary. But now red is like, wow, you didn't add any more troops up there? Well, now I am going to, I am going to use this militia and this Omsk. Well, you know what? Oh, it's too bad I didn't have a stone. You know what? Maybe I won't use Omsk because I have a build here. I would love to be able to build with one stone a castle in Omsk and defend it. And right now I only have to put one troop up there. So for now, let's just put a troop up there. Now, unless blue can put a troop up there also, it'll come back to me. And then maybe by then I'll have the ability to put another, uh, put, get a stone out. Uh, we are not going to be drawing anytime soon, so I don't want to do a card. I could put three more cards in the reserve. So let's just show off the fact that we could build in Omsk and also potentially put a ship out there too, I guess. All right, that way we can draw is draw more cards is what we need to do here. Oh yes, now we have plenty of troops. So it's pretty much over for blue. Blue doesn't know it yet, but with all those troops there, we are fairly confident that unless blue does something crazy up there, that we are going to be able to defend that province. Okay, so we added a troop and, uh, added cards to our reserve. Okay, yellow. Oh shoot, I forgot all about this. And there was nothing we could do there. We had two troops we could put there, but that wouldn't have been enough. So you know what? We're just going to have to say that yellow takes it, which sucks. Yellow is running away with the game at this point. So yellow then says in this war, yellow takes Irikand. Is Irikand still in the deck or, oh, is it in the discard pile? Irikand was like their only, was Red's only food province. So yellow takes Irikand. Gets the last Spoils of War. So three cards have now been emptied. Yellow now gets one, two, three, four. Red loses one, two, three. This is not looking good. If blue and red were like, you know, trying to stop yellow from winning, red would almost just let blue have that one to get at least yellow up there if they wanted to play Kingmaker, but they all hate each other equally, so they're not gonna do that. All right, so yellow just did that. Now we need to get rid of one more of these and yellow can declare end of the game. They either need to kill a dragon or kill someone's citadel. Nesh, I would love to attack Nesh. Because that would that's the easiest one to hit right now. Still before though, I don't. Ha I'm actually not in a, the best position right now. Yellow's not in the best position to be attacking anything. Instead, we could build roads. You know what? Let's chip away at the road card. If the dragons are too tough and the citadel's too tough, let's just start chipping away at one of those other objectives. So. As our second action, we are building with two bricks a road from, uh, let's do Hatchel to our capital, Welkin. All right, that is a road right up here, and that is two more points for yellow. Yellow can just sit there and cruise. We're going to put one of these up top. We're going to put a troop up there. Show everyone we can defend ourselves. And now we're drawn back up to six. So we are going through this deck like crazy, constantly reshuffling the discard pile, which means we're constantly drawing fantastic cards. 
And we really don't need to waste time calling with all of the ability to just store things in the reserve if need be, draw more cards, have a huge hand size. Look at all those troops. Okay. Blue is like, okay, well, red has a combat value up there of four. We currently have a combat value up there of three. I need this red. I'm sorry. I need that territory. I am going to have to boom army and food. Send another troop up there. That's not going to give me enough to take it over yet. I'm going to spend these two gold to buy my fourth and final ship. Hopefully I can get a ship out there next turn. So I bought a ship and I added a troop and now I'm refilling my hand. There's a portal and there are more troops. So hopefully we can do this. Red says, all right, well, we should honestly be attacking yellow right now. Maybe let's leave that alone. Let, let's attack yellow. We have got to attack yellow. That is the bottom line here. Let's go all out. Let's attack yellow. And we're going to do that right here, right now. I'm not adding any more troops up there. If that's what you want to do, that's what you got to do. I don't know. Should I add one more troop up there? Maybe just to keep? Well, no, it's tied. So I'm not going to add any more up there. You can keep wasting time up there if you want. You're not going to take it from me next turn, blue. So red says, okay, I have four troops here plus one for my cavalry. Where can I attack you from? Eon, no. Frampold, yes. Yes, 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 I can attack you from Frampold. Not from Dragonate, because that would go over mountains. And I only have one food. So there's four troops, one food, and I'm going to attack from Frampold. Now, Frampold's up there, so I can come down to Custis or Hatchel. Maybe Hatchel, because if I take over Hatchel, maybe I can go up north to your citadel. That's what we're going to do, yellow, you greedy bastard. You've been attacking everything we in shooting up the scoring track but see even gaps like this don't mean much when if you lose three boom and i gain three boom i'll have to do that maybe a couple times i mean eventually you are going to get so far ahead that it's not going to be not going to be possible but okay that's what we're doing frampled with food for troops and it's a good thing i bought all those extra troop counters too speaking as red. Okay, so from Frampold, we're going over to Hatchel. Now, Hatchel is defended by one yellow ship. Um, so that was, what, just our first action, right? We could build a castle in Dragonate. Nope. That's always the thing we have. We have a build, a stone, and one province where we already have a castle. So instead, we our second action is just going to be go boom, boom, that way we can get more cards out here. Oh, and finally, of course, the last card in our deck was the Philosopher, which will allow us to draw three of these and keep one. And it could be something absolutely game-changing. But in the meantime, and that's a free action to do that too, so in addition to whatever else we do, we'll, we'll also do that. And there's our Marauders. Perfect. So we have more military. We have the ability to reduce their military. All right, hopefully we can take out that yellow province. All right, yellow. Yellow says, I hate to say this to you, Blue, but I actually have a shit ton of troops. So if I only had one more, you know what? I do have another gold too. I could add another ship there. But the problem with that is I would be using this army card and that would be worth two armies instead of just a ship. So let's hold off on doing the ship. Instead, we are... Where's Hatchel? Do we have Hatchel here? We probably already just used it. Because obviously we're, we could also try to build a castle in Hatchel in the future. All right, but in the meantime... No, I'm sorry. You son of a gun. Five. Five troops. We are 
deploying to defend Hatchell. We are in the lead and we're not giving up the lead. So that's five plus one is six. You have four plus your cavalry is five. So we're ahead by one. I know you probably have marauders, which of course they do. So that'll reduce us by one. But you better add a bunch more stuff because believe me, we are going to be adding more stuff ourselves. Okay, anyway, what else do we want to do? We don't have the ability to build or buy any more ships. We do have another gold in case we need to buy more troops, which we probably will. But in the meantime, let's just stick two of these up here in our reserve. Our reserve is seven now. Five plus two from the warehouse is seven. Let's just put them all up there. A seven cards in our reserve. And let's draw six more cards. Boom, 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 boom. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have more troops. We have Providence, well, which will allow us to draw even more cards. Yellow is golden right now. All right, that's it. Over to blue. Blue. Okay, blue's like, I need to take that over if we have any chance of stopping yellow. So blue has four. Red has four. Blue can add two more troops with this market, and that's what they're going to do. One food, two troops. We're adding two more troops to there. We have another ship out here. We bought that earlier, apparently. Just get another ship out there. We'll have another ship. Okay, we can turn something into gold. We really don't want to. Let's go ahead and put all this in our reserve. Let's put all of it in our reserves. Our reserves is up to seven cards now. That way we can draw these two. There's our ship. And then we are also going to be able to reshuffle these, draw five more. So in case you can't see, it's a stone and a ship. All right. Shuffling the discard pile. This deck, in comparison to, like, yellows, is so thin. Okay. So we have, oh, we have no more troops. We have a stone, a ship, a food, a gold, and a market card, which... Would let us build, but nothing else. All right. Over to red. Red says, okay, well, what do we have here? Let's do the philosopher first of all. That's a free action. So we are drawing from this deck three cards, and we don't actually put that in our discard. That's a one-time use card. So boom, here's what we have. Another army card. Awesome. Counselor is a free action. Discard cards and draw the same number of replacements, including one for this card. This is another card like yellow would probably love, where you just cycle through your deck. And finally, reserve army can be used as an army, but you can also put it in your reserve. Immune from invasion if you are already engaged in a war with another player. Yellow would honestly love this, because then they can never be taken over as long as they are constantly engaged in a battle. And that also is fantastic because then they can never be invaded twice. That would be a perfect card for yellow to make sure that red and blue don't team up on them. Red, though, out of all of these, I think they want the army one. Reserve army is fantastic, but I just can't see them being in a situation where they would be afraid of being invaded. Yellow... It's probably just going to try to keep building roads. Because they want to end this game as fast as they can. Building roads or castles. Or maybe attacking dragon provinces. So their only threat is really going to ever be from blue. And I can't see blue attacking them like twice. So I honestly think, unless they want to go through their deck faster, this army card... May be the best bet. So, you know what? In some ways, the army card may be considered the weakest of these three. But I read with their invasion capabilities, I'm going to take that army card. That is the one I'm going to choose. All right, so that was a free action. Uh, so what would we have over here now? Red has two, three, four. Blue has, what is that, five, six. All right, so we can reduce... Wait, no, 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 no. 
Wait, well, okay, so we're actually attacking Hatchel. About that, Blue can take it over. So honestly, at this point, which one do we want to go towards? That one has four. Yellow has one, says five, six. So either way, we would even it out. Do we want to defend ourselves or take down yellow? Well, let's take down yellow. All right, so Marauders, free action, removes one yellow army. Oh, fun and games, I have no food. Nope, I have no food. Damn it, I have no food to add another troop to Hatchel. Unbelievable. So we are stuck. Yellow's going to be able to defend that province. So do I go after blue then? Oh, no. Our, I just feel like it's giving the game to yellow if I go after blue. Oh, my gosh. Maybe blue will come to their senses and knock it off over there, but probably not. But okay, so because I don't need food to add a troop to my own defense, so I'm using marauders on blue to get rid of a blue army and using my blore card to add one more. So now it is three, four, five to four, five. All right. So that was a free action, a free action, and a paid action. Oh, boy, is there anything else I can do? Well, we can build. You know what? Let's build. We do have the ability to build here. Grimp, Queen, or Eon. Not Eon. Grimp or Queen. Let's go ahead and build in Grimp. We're going to build a no, not a city. Nope, 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 nope. We're going to build in Queen then. A road, because we want those point counters. So we're building in Queen two stone. That'll allow us to build a road and get two points. So we're building Queen to Leah. And boom, boom, red just got two points, and that is it. Unfortunately, shit. Look at all those armies, though, and food. If we would have just had that food, we could have prevented what's about to happen. But yellow is about to say, end that war. Now, yellow gets nothing for successfully defending. Is this the first successful defense? Maybe. Yellow gets nothing for successfully defending. They All they get is a, a wasted action. So now they only have one action left. Now what do they want to do? Well, let's use Providence, draw two more cards. Of course, it's another army. I actually don't have a lot of armies. Oh, we can build another road. Let's do that, because we want to get rid of these road counters and end this fucking game. All right, build two stone. Anywhere, 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 anywhere. Just anywhere. Nusu, yeah, sure. Nusu, we're building a road. Two points. Nusu to Diclesium. One, two. If yellow, and we're going to put a card up in reserves for free, we are going to put just this food. So they can't see we have any troops, and yet our hand is completely full of troops. Boom, boom. All right. So if blue and red don't get their shit together, yellow's running away with it. So now blue says, we're tied here. What do we do? Blue has no more troops, but they do have a ship. They're gonna add a ship, their final ship here. Why? Because that'll also defend their capital, too, in case of invasion. But that'll also add plus one military strength there, so it'll give them the lead in the northwest. Now what? They have no troops. They literally don't have a single troop. They can build, but do they want to build and end the game faster? Let's just build, let's just, because it'll be points. All right, 
Where do we build? A city in Camarine, I guess. Two stone, a build card, and the Camarine. Oh, fun and games. Number one, we don't have a city. Number two, okay, no, it's a road. Because we're already out of city token, so it's a road. We're building a road, thank God, from Camarine to show. Two points for blue. All right, there's only one. As soon as someone builds the next road, blue, yellow can declare that the game's over. All right. That was their two actions. So now they also they still have no armies. Does yellow have almost every army card? No, red does too. But in case you can't see, blue has a gold, a stone, a build, a gold, and a market. And of course, their portal and their gold mine, no armies at all. All right, red is like, you know what? Screw you. I can't deal with that up there. So instead, I have to attack yellow. Where am I going to attack yellow this time? Oh, fudge, fudge, fudge. Well, we have the food and three armies, no matter what. So here's the three armies. Frampold, attack them south to Custis is what we're probably going to do. Yes, we're, here's the food. So Frampold... With food, Frampold's here. We're tagging him south to Custis. They are, Yellow is going to get the benefit of that ship, but the only other thing would be from Dragonate, which is here. I don't have the food to cross the hill. And plus, they would have that ship added to their Highland bonus. So that would have been plus two. So that's the best option right there. Either that or come over here to Hatchel again. Oh, fudge. Maybe that's what we do. Just say, you know what? Let's We're going back to Hatchel. Because we have the cavalry and three troops. This is four. We're going, we're doing this again. And that was our first action, right? Because that was three troops, that and that. I think that all came from right here. Yep, so that was that. And we have nothing else we can do unless we want to buy a card. You know what? I am going to buy a card. I'm going to buy the Alchemist. The Alchemist allows you to exchange one of your victory point counters, turn it into the next level higher. So it's basically spend an action for a victory point. Probably a waste of time at this point, but you never know. All right, so now we have lots of troops. So this is fantastic. We could... You know, see what they do up there. Maybe they defend themselves. Maybe they don't. But maybe we either add more troops there or we attack them in a second location because now we have uh, food. We have more troops. What I'd love this to be is a gold because then we wouldn't have to use this army card for its gold in order to buy those mercenaries. And it is. Oh, my gosh. Red may have saved the game for blue and himself all right yellow then says coming back to hatchel that is not i mean come on really that's kind of ridiculous at this point uh yellow only has a single gold does yellow have any gold provinces even no i'm not seeing a single gold pro producing province on the board but yellow really doesn't care at this point. They just want to defend themselves and, you know, build, build that final road. So with that being said, they are going to, what are they going to do? Just add four troops. Looks like it's the best they can do. And that's not a bad idea because then red has a four there. Now yellow has five there because of the ship. Next action, we're going to add one of these to our reserves for free. And we are going to spend this gold to get this other market card because we are going to reshuffle this now. And that could give us the ability to get another ship out. 
which would be nice to help us because yellow is all about defending themselves right now. They don't care about anything else. Get another ship out. That'll add to our defense wherever we are attacked. So that is that. And then we're reshuffling this. It'd be awesome if at least two of these five cards that we're about to draw were gold. I think that means they'd have to both be the markets. And uh, nope, no markets. Unless this Providence card allows us to draw both markets, but that's unlikely. But either way, we have more armies if need be. That is that. All right, over to blue. Blue says end that war. And you know what? Red's not, red's pissed, but not as pissed because that gives red some army counters back, which he needs. Blue also is please also that gives red back his mercenary counters which he would not have had but he does lose omsk must be still in his deck and that is a military card which blue desperately needs so that it was almost kind of a a help helping hand there so blue goes one two three red goes one two three down so Blue's trying to bridge the gap there. So that was the first action. He has no troops, though. Oh, boy. What does he do? Can't buy any more ships. He's already has, he already has all his ships out. The gold, he could buy more army counters. Uh, he could build a castle somewhere. You know what? Just for the sake of it, he's going to build a castle. Build a castle in Trogel. That's where he was so worried this whole time about this little Trogel being defended. So Blue does get another point for that, for building a castle. And that was his second action. So Blue, that was a good, that was four points total for Blue on that turn. And he has more troops now, the portal to attack anywhere, food. Blue's ready to attack, and red is ready to attack as well. So red, boom, let's do this. We are going to take out Hatchel here and now. Red, three, four, to yellow's five. All right, so we're going to add three more troops. Boom, boom, boom and spend a gold and add two mercenaries as a free action so that means we have what's that stack that stack is six seven eight nine to yellow's five yellow's going to need to put four troops there or it's over and it's not looking good Yellow may lose that one. And if that's the case, one, two, three, one, two, three, the gap. No, I'm sorry. That would be red. Red would go up. Blue needs to start attacking either red or yellow, actually. All right. So then that was his first action was to add those troops, right? Yep. Added those troops with, oh, shit. Okay. No, 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 no. That's, not, that's okay. We added three troops. We did, forgot to feed them, so we'll use this ship card to feed them because we wanted to use the market card for its gold. All right, so that's it. We have nothing else we can do, so then we will just go ahead and redraw. And this is a good situation here because we have two more armies if need be and gold to buy more army counters if necessary. All right, so then yellow is like, well, fudge. Hopefully, this Providence card gets me an army card. Well, there is one more troop. This either has to be the army card. Oh, you know what? I think we're screwed either way because we have no more army counters. Boom, and it's not. Yellow is going to lose that province, that region, unless they can build a castle there in Hatchel. Do they have Hatchel? Oh, sh shoot. They don't have a build card. If they had a build card, they could have built a castle there. But no, no build card. No build card and only three troops. So if we do the math here, no gold to buy more troops. And only two troops could even be placed. So yellow's going to lose that one. 
Yikes. They need that build card. They need to get that last road out ASAP. Oh, boy. Oh, bo 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 boy. Well, what does red do then? Can yellow attack red somewhere else? Because yellow does have three troops. Yellow could attack blue somewhere. Oh, my gosh. The tables have turned. So yellow has four plus one is five. Red has six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, so yellow would need four somehow, and there's no four military value anywhere in this amalgamation of cards. All right, so, well, with that being the case, what do they do? Well, he has these two stones, so he's going to keep those with the hopes of drawing a build. And maybe he attacks, or maybe he just tries to defend himself next time. Does he hold off on invading somewhere else? Or does he invade somewhere where he can easily win next time? Maybe just a neutral province. You know what? Let's do it. Let's go from... Where, where do we have here? Cory Fee. Let's go from Cory Fee with food, just two troops. And which ones are we using? Let's use Diclesium. We don't really need that one probably for anything. Welkin is our capital. Maybe we don't use Welkin then. Gallingale. It's probably okay too. Just two troops from Corifi with food. That's all the troops we have anyway. Coming down from Corifi to Sorner. Oh, fudge. Nope, let's go to Mome then. Because we want that ship to add plus one. So that'll be three. Next turn we will take that over. Bump ourselves up by three. All right. And in the meantime, well, instead of using... Because what was what would that have been? That was our first action, right? So instead of using new super food, let's say we used Custis. Yeah, well, we're about to get rid. Of, we're about to lose Hatchel. So let's use Hatchel for food. The reason I do that is because that'll open up our reserves a little bit more, so we can put more cards up there. Let's put. I guess we'll put these two stones up there. That way we can draw four new cards. One, two, three, four. Look at all those armies. Still no build though. Oh boy, yellow's not panicking, but it's getting closer. All right, blue now is like, all right, we have yellow on the ropes. If we attack him somewhere else, he will lose even more because right now he's going to lose three. If we attack him again, he'll lose three more. One, two, three. And if blue gains three, it'll be up three. So blue would take the lead just like that. So blue is going to attack yellow. And he can attack him anywhere he wants with this portal. So portal... Now, which food do we? Well, we're going to use these three troops no matter what. Where do we attack yellow? I say pained because we have two ships here. All right, so the portal with food. Japosia will be our food. That's three troops to pained. We have three ships, one, two, and one over there. So that is six right there. All right. Yeah, all of a sudden, things are not looking the best. Yellow's going to have to put three troops there just to save that one. And that's assuming red doesn't attack them him again. All right. Yellow, of course, in this game, when you jump out to the lead, you become enemy number one. 
All right, so in case you can't see, blue drew very poorly. Gold, market, brick, brick, portal. So they won't be adding any troops. Red is going to say end this war. Yellow, unfortunately, loses Hatchel. Unbelievable. That was the gateway to their Citadel. They do like the fact they got those army counters back. They do lose a city, though, so their reserve reduces by one. Even though they have a full reserve, though, they don't have to discard anything. Just when they get rid of one of the cards, they won't be able to fill it back as long as it's... Now, in this case, they have a reserve of six now. All right, so Hatchel, which they did just use, is lost to red. Red gains that. And one, two, three. Yellow loses one, two, three. All right, so then what does red do now? Red would like to invade yellow again, but they can't. They have no food. Oh, boy. They could build a castle, though. That would be a point. Yep, let's just go ahead and do that then. They're going to build a castle in Frampold or Dragonate. Going to have to be Frampold because Dragonate already has a castle. All right, castle in Frampold is another point. And now the castle only has two ticks left on it. All right, still no food for red. Oh, yellow, yellow, yellow. Yellow first says end that war which is fantastic. They've now taken over Mome, which is three more points. One, two, three. Just like that, they got back. And now they have Mome, which they actually kind of like the fact they got the gold for that. Now what? Now they're being attacked by blue there with six. And yellow is pissed as hell. They're like, are you shitting me right now? You've got to be freaking kidding me. I'm tired of this. I have one, which means I need to add five troops there. And you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do is add five troops. Blue can't believe what's about to happen. No food necessary. He's defending his own territory. One, two, three, four, five. Five troops is almost all his troops, but thankfully he's there and he's going to defend himself. Um, he can't add anything more to his reserve. Uh, so he ended a war, added troops. So one, and there we go. That's a good sign. Why? Because he has gold. So if necessary, he can buy more troops, but also he can buy that ship and put uh, the ship out if he wanted to. Okay, so that was it. And we have the build. We can finally build the final road, two more points, and hopefully be able to end the game. Blue says fudge, because blue does not have any more troops to add. Blue has six, yellow has six as well. So it is a draw. So at least yellow won't be able to end that war in their favor, but blue can't do anything else there either. They have food, they have gold. What do they want to do here? They can buy a card. That's all they can do. So let's just go ahead then, I guess, and buy, no, let's keep Nesh. The market, we may want that for food. So let's use our gold mine to turn this into a gold and buy this water mill which doubles the resources gained from one other card so if they wanted to in case they didn't think yellow had two gold to build a road they could i don't know do something with more gold or uh more food or go over a hill with more food all right and then they're just going to stick all of this in their reserve because they need more troops and they don't care what anyone else sees. All right, they got their army card and they got another troop. So they have a potential here of three more troops and that's all the army counters they have left. So as long as yellow doesn't add three more troops there, they should be fine. 
and yellow can't add three more troops there. So it's gonna be scary. All right, red can't do anything. He has no army thing out there. Oh, what he could do is help blue by reducing yellow's army by one, but yellow Yellow would get to go next anyway. He has no food. Does he do that? He has to assume yellow's going to be able to put another troop there. So I don't know if he does that. Oh, fudge. But what else can he do? Well, he can hold off on that for now. He can add things to his reserve. And he could buy that card. Let's buy with that gold this final card. Because he can't build anything either. And then three more cards up there. Let's just put, I guess, all these. These three. And then one, two, three. Oh, come on. If this last card is not a food, red is screwed. And it's not unbelievable. All right, yellow got caught a break there for sure. This alchemist, though, will at least give him an extra point. But at this point, I don't know if it's too little too late. Yellow says, I'm building a goddamn final road. Build card with my two bricks. And where is the next question? I guess Custis. Uh, or Nusu. Nope, we already did. Ah, let's do Nusu. Nusu, road up to Talion, two points, boom, one, two, and the game can now be declared over at the beginning of his next turn. But in the meantime, now what does he do? He has six there, blue has six there. Maybe he just waits in case red attacks and he needs to put his troops somewhere else. Actually, no, what he does is he spends two gold to get his ship. And then he can launch the ship next turn. Or does he buy more troops? You know what? I think he uses that two gold to buy two more troops instead. Because the ship's only worth one. Whereas, more than likely, he'll draw more army cards. He'll be able to add up to three more armies wherever necessary so we'll do that we can add one card up there for free and we are going to put the general up there just so they are aware and we'll shuffle these up and keep our fingers crossed that we can end the war the end the game next time so what's going to happen Blue could potentially add more troops there. If they do, they go up three, red loses three, because I'm assuming, you know, yellow declares end the game, so all wars end immediately. So yellow could potentially lose that one, but that would be okay. Even if blue gained three, yellow loses three, as long as red doesn't attack yellow. And I'm telling you folks, it looks like right now, red doesn't have that ability. So unless blue attacks adds troops there as well as attacks him in a separate area, which it looks like that's what's gonna have to be the case. Start a second conflict. One, two, three, four, five, six. He has plenty of armies now, but does blue. Blue says, all right, so what I need to do is just add a troop we can do that. I'm just going to use this food and this troop to add one there. Boom, I'm leading there. Now I'm going to use this food, two armies, and the portal for my final two armies to send them somewhere easily attackable. Badge. All right, so now yellow cannot end the game because the blue will gain six, three, four, five, six. 
yellow would lose six. So yellow is screwed because of blue's ability to do that. All right, but that was it. So then blue does have one more troop. And it's tough. It's very tough when you get in down to this situation. Blue now has a food, build, build, gold, food, army. Because obviously red and blue are not going to let yellow win. And yellow can't hold off being invaded all the time everywhere. You have to be light years ahead in order to, you know, stop a 12-point swing. But blue, I mean red, has no ability to invade. Oh boy, so what do they do? They could make yellow worse there. They think that would make yellow worse, but that would actually give them a token back. And they honestly don't give a shit. They have tons of troops. So first of all, they're going to use this alchemy ability to turn one of these one-pointers into a two-pointer. All that does is literally give them a point. Because what else can they do? Nothing. Nothing at all. All right. No more room in their reserves. They're not going to use their marauders. So now they will shuffle these up. Well, maybe they should use their marauders. You know what they are. Because that will give them the, the ability to draw a third card that's more opportunities for food and they are going to do it on yellow so even though that gives yellow a troop counter back they're hoping that's that they don't have as many armies as they actually do down there yellow has plenty of opportunity to defend themselves but as long as red and blue keep picking at them then it's just going to be over and that's why, unfortunately, the end game of this game could just go on and on and on. Okay, three, no, two, only two more cards. There's a food. Boom. Yellow is screwed because red can attack them in a big way next turn. So the player who's playing yellow tells the player who's playing red, listen, I'll buy you lunch if you don't freaking attack me so we can just end this all right so yellow is being attacked on two fronts by blue blue you know what well blue does have the ability to buy more troops because i was going to say blue is out of army counters yellow though what does yellow do here yellow just needs two there and uh what do they have here they have seven and we have, oh God, so we, I think we would have had to add more troops there anyway, because blue has uh, four, five, six, seven, we, yellow only has five, so we need to add two there for sure, so there's two, and then we need to add two over there for sure, and this is not looking good for yellow. Oh boy. We, oh. Nope, because we are just out. Out of troop counters, out of gold. What else could we do? We can build. What did I, what cards did I just use? Peened? No, 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 no. Because I can build a fucking castle and pinged are you shitting me no what was this one badge don't have badge all right in pinged so we did add two troops there for sure but in pinged oh hell no we built a castle there is a point boom and a castle in pinged there's the two there, and now we still have two army counters left. So now what the hell do we do? Do we invade somewhere else? Because then even if we lost, let's say we lost three, we would only lose six points. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. They would have to win both of them. Blue would have to win both of them. They couldn't. Oh, fun and games. What are our options here? Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Because what do we have? We have four, five, six, seven. Blue has three, four, five, six, seven. So that is a stalemate. That is a stalemate. Let's assume blue wins both of those. They would go up. Well, they. the worst case scenario, they win both of them. But they can't possibly win both of them. And defender wins ties. I like this. I think we might be able to freaking do this. We will go from Irikand down here to Paul Maine with food and two troops. Oh, fudge. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Nope. Because Defender wins ties, Paul Maine. Is there anywhere else we could go where our ship would help us out? I think we've already taken over every land that we could where, our, where a ship would help us, unfortunately. Because I was assuming that we would have three more points. But let's say blue, let's say red invades us, takes us over. We would lose three. Blue, let's say, we would lose three more. So we would lose six total. One, two, three, four, five, six. And blue would gain three. It would be so close. Now, of course, I'm saying all this, not totally knowing that, you know, blue actually could not win both of those. So blue would only win one. What would yellow do not knowing that? Yellow is so tired at this point. They will leave two troops. I don't even know which cards I had in my reserve and which ones I did not, but I am just gonna put one I'm gonna, I don't know if that one was up there. We'll just do that. I think the general was up there. Because I think this will end it. And this is what yellow's doing, not knowing what the other players have. Yellow built a castle. And added troops. Those were the only two actions they could take anyway. So nope, no matter what, those were the only two actions they could take. So they could not have invaded a third place anyway. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now they have more gold. They can buy more troops if necessary. So that is that. They built a castle and they added troops there. And that is all that they could do. All right, so then blue says, all right, well, you've tied us here, seven to seven. You've tied us there. I only have the ability to add one more troop, and I have to buy him first. So first, we're going to spend a gold to buy a troop, and then we're going to use food and this troop card to add a troop. Where? I guess peened. All right, that is it. And hopefully, and so Yellow sees this and they're like, all right, this is going to be it because unless Red can attack on two fronts, it may very well be game over. And Blue doesn't have any more troops on their next turn even if they could. All right, that means... Red is invading for a fact. 
From where, though, is the question. Can't? Yes, we can from Leah, or Queen, to Irritant. All right. From Queen with food, one, two, three, four, five troops, which is actually a factor of six because of the cavalry. I was actually going to look to see. Actually, maybe, no, Scombroid wouldn't allow us to invade yellow. Blor wouldn't allow us to invade yellow because I was going to see if there's anywhere where red could invade yellow where it would be even more militarily powerful for them to do so if they could use their ships. But no, Scombroid is not adjacent to any yellow. Bloor is not adjacent to any yellow. And th that's it. Okay, so that is that. We are spending, we're going from Queen here, spending the ship card for food with five troops to go from Queen down here to Irikin with the hope. And I think Red now knows it's game over anyway because they could not invade a second time. If Red could have invaded a second time, it would have been game over. But now it is over two. Is that, well, that was just our first action. I guess we put these two up in reserves. That way we could just add two more cards. All right, now it's over to yellow. Yellow says, end this game. So the game ends right now. If we tally this up, would yellow still win? So this, yellow would lose this. Boom. Boom. Blue takes over peened. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yellow retains control of badge. So nothing changes there. Red controls this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Red to control of Irican. Which is right there. And that is it. All wars have been resolved. Obviously, at least four of the victory point cards had to be ended for yellow to make that end the game declaration. And as soon as they did, all wars resolve. Yellow was fought just far enough ahead that they were able to retain victory point control, giving Yellow the win. But my God, you can see how tough it is to end this game when, especially in a three-player game, like a two-player game, I, uh, I played this two-player with a living human being and it was easier to end just because one player couldn't be teamed up on like this. So at the end here, red and blue were both picking on yellow and it was tough for yellow to be able to get into a position where they could end the game where all after wars resolved would still result in them having a victory point victory. But that is it. And this is proof it can be done. And how the hell long did this take? Three and a half hours but of course, I'm analysis paralysis anyway. I can't figure out what I'm doing for one player, let alone three. Three and a half hours for three players, me just bitching around. Here's how it ended. Unbelievable. This is absolutely insane. I love Mythotopia. I really do. This is the limited edition version with the wooden pieces. The regular edition has just cardboard punch-out tiles, which are very nice, very evocative. The artwork matches the cards and stuff, so it actually lines up with what you would expect more. But hopefully that gave you an idea of how insane this game can be. I love it, though, because I love the card play. I love what you are able to do is dictated by your card. So you need to build a good deck. You need to build your deck to do what you want it to do. Blue was running low on army cards. They just could not get an army card to save their life. 
Red had no food. They had all the army cards in the world, but no food. Yellow had a good mix, but they most importantly had these fantastic cards. Let them cycle through the deck. I just love Mythotopia, one of my favorite games of all time. So I hope if any of you actually did watch this all the way through to the end, give yourselves a pat on the back. You've earned my respect. Thank you all so much for watching. I do truly appreciate it. And until next time.